So where were we? You guys had just decided you were going to climb, climb, the, cliff. climb the cliff? Climb the cliff. Climb the cliff. Okay. Yeah. Were you, were you going to go down the ways and try to circumvent it, or were you just going to go straight up the cliff? Uh, we were going to go down a little ways to kind of come at it from an angle rather than just like drape some like right up to the front door <coughs> kind of thing. Okay. So we're going to go off to the right, to our right. How far? That cliff. So that would be what, north? Yeah. It would be north from where you are? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, north. Yeah. We're going to head off north and then come at that cliff from an angle so they don't just see our approach. Okay. Unless they still do. But, oh well. What do you think they do? <laughs> <laughs> and then perhaps... Uh, Someone get me a uh, stealth check for uh, Luminous Amanda? real quick. Yeah. Whatever she... <laughs> 17, 17 plus... I think four? Six. She has her here. Right? Three. Oh, it, should yeah. be, it should be in the book first page. Oh, that's all my stuff. <laughs> Book first page passers. You said stealth, right? Yeah. Bob one? It's a plus. No, hers is a, it's a plus five. Hers is higher up. 22. So a 22? Yeah. All right. So uh, with Lumi leading the way, she finds a good spot where there's a nice break and plenty of handholds, and it's actually only maybe about an 11 foot climb or so to try to get up and make your way along the cliffside. Nice. Bridges. Good so, job, Lumi. You guys spend about uh, the better part of 20 minutes making your way up there, trying to assist the Dragonborn in his armor to get up the cliff. Yeah, I don't need assistance. Just and a hand. You realize there's about maybe only, uh, at this side, there's only maybe about a seven to eight foot wide uh, space enough for you guys to kind of make your way along until it gets wider again. So as you make your way along, um, you uh, kick like this rock. So I need you to make a deck save. Oh. <clears throat> nine. A nine? Nine. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you go and you step, this loose rock just comes out from underneath you and you start to slip, but you end up like just reaching your claws back and catching the side of the cliff behind you and you just barely, it starts scraping down, tearing out the uh, rock behind you. Oh. And you just barely hold on. You guys see it, and it makes a whole bunch of noise. You guys hear this rock like tumble down, crack, crack, through the foliage uh, down below you. Oh, help, help, help. Help. I, 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 but you don't see any movement or any kind of response from the the, the dying fire that you can see directly. I, I run. Of you. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't interrupt. Mm -hmm. I run up I to go know. help. <laughs> stop and go. You're heavy, uh, big man. Can you come help? Yeah, fine. I couldn't lift a bench if I wanted to. Uh, I'm trying to maintain a stable foothold and reach down and grab for his for his claw and drag him up to a safe spot where he's no longer slipping. All right. Yeah. So you give me a, a strength check. Oh, I'm I'm super strong, but saying that it's gonna bite me in the ass. Yeah. Oh, that that. It's in between. Roll again. Roll again. <laughs> 16 plus my amazing. Oh, it's enough. You just, you grab him. 19. You grab him, pull him up, and That's just 19. yank him up. And you kind of kind of come off your feet Ooh. a little bit as this massive half orc just like yanks you up. Like full blown. Yeah. I, I set him back on solid ground. Uh, gotta be careful wearing that heavy armor. It's, uh, it's as much a disadvantage as anything else. I shake off all the dust and dirt. And that. Well, and then I stop and realize, well, I should shake it off. Probably too loud. I'm like, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Just don't do not do it again. I want to live. Got dirt in my chain mail. <laughs> All right, so as you guys continue to make your way along, your along the edge, it begins to widen, <laughs> and there begins to be more like crevices and cracks, and it's more rocky up here on top of the mesa. And there's a few overhanging trees and bushes kind of growing from the side of the cliff. Uh, and you can see that Lumi was 100% correct. You can, you can see that there is or was a small camp here and all that's been left behind is just kind of like random junk. Uh, do, there looks like there may be documents on the on the table, uh, but you don't see a cave and you don't see any signs of any uh, sentries anywhere. Are you going to help me up or not? What? I'm still down here. <laughs> we'll, we'll climb up. Yeah. No. It's safe, we promise. Come on, we, we should, come on. You can't be Here. weaker than me, and Here. I made it up here just fine. Can you climb a rope? 
You know how to climb a rope. Did you read a book about that? <laughs> yes, I went to school. Yeah, well, here you go. And I throw a rope down. Oh, I failed it. gym class. Yeah, that whole, <laughs> that whole the other end of the rope. I'll have you know. <laughs> Contemplate. I, I gotta be in his gym performance. Class. So is he able to just climb the rope? Up? Yeah, no, it's fine. Oh, and he climbs right up. Cool. Oh, I was I was hoping for a catastrophe. He didn't have to make a check to climb the cliff in the first place because oh. nobody else did. Yeah. All right. You're gonna get left behind and killed by elves if you're not careful. So, so what are you guys doing? Uh, I walk over to the papers. Yeah. Okay. Make an investigation check. Okay. Oh, so he wants to set off the trap. Mm -hmm. Fourteen. Fourteen. Um, picking them up, you can see that a lot of it is... It looks like it's just basically random nonsense. There's a whole bunch of, like, just written weird phrases and stuff um, in Elvish. Uh, do, you, do you have Elvish in your languages now? I do. No. No. Okay. So, so you can't read anything. Up. You know it's Elvish, but you can't read anything. But underneath all of that, it seems like there is a small like sketch or a drawing kind of of the central vale and the primary river and it looks like there is a map of a like like a farm or a homestead of some sort you can't really tell for sure not really familiar with like all the structures and all the farms and villages in the area but it looks like there's something and you can see uh at the bottom uh maybe written in common it just says matthias Hmm. I assume you read Elvish. Absolutely. There's probably nothing here if they left it behind. Well, the picture is interesting, though. I think maybe. Ooh, picture. Yeah, sketch of the area. I don't know the area well, but. Or if any of you know the area well. Is there a farmer or someone with land around here by the name of Matthias? Well, I'm new to the area. I mean, we all rode here together, so... Yeah, I'm absolutely new to the area. Would I know the area at all? You never know. No. I live close-ish? Mm. No? All right. No. Leor's nowhere near the Central Vale. I'm gonna try to uh, read oh, the papers. Oh, right, we're in the Central Vale. Yeah. Never mind. This, this farm, though, it could be where they're hiding. <sighs> or it could be a target. Both. Or it was their first target, and now it's where they're hiding. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go along the wall. Make sure there's nothing weird going on here. Search the wall for hidden stuff, like a cave. Are you trying? Are you trying to attack from man? Uh, what I want to do is I want to, <laughs> I want to channel this magic energy into my hand and release it into the wall. I'm not magical, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna search, <laughs> try and dissolve any kind of illusions with my with my hand. All right, so please uh, make a uh, an investigation check. Viking um, is confused by your inside joke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, investigation is minus one. Oh, I'm super perceptive. I uh, I rolled a sixteen. So fifteen total. No, 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 16. I rolled a 17 minus 1, because I'm so smart. Okay. So, as you start running your hand along the cliffs and kind of, like, touching it, and every once in a while just, like, pulling back, because you're not, you expect your hand to go through. Yeah, oh, just in sort. case, you know. Um, you go along most of the camp, but you don't find anything out of place. Uh, I searched, but I, I, didn't, I didn't see anything or feel anything. I, I, was, I was very careful, you know, because there could be an illusion, like, could be anything, like even an illusion. But uh, I didn't find anything. I wanted to do it to him so bad. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, so so we found paper. Uh, I think we failed our mission. Seems like we failed. I don't think so. Well, I, um, let's find out what the papers say. And I pull them out and I try to read through them as best I can. Uh, it's just a. Um, it just repeats over and over again. Uh, like a couple of different phrases. Uh, one that just says, uh, Kalina is dead. Um, it's the human's fault. 
and just so on and so forth in that kind of fashion. It just keeps going over and over again, just scribbled. Help, help That's the nonsense. name of, uh, of Silvana's sister, right? I don't think a history check. I don't think they do. That. This is my history. Uh, that's a 20. It's a 20. Uh, they didn't tell you. When you asked, the uh, Wood Elf explained that it was considered basically impolite to speak of, like, on behalf of other people's oh, dead right. relatives. Right. In they, such would, a manner. They, they refused to give us their name because of that, right? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so K E Y L E N N A. I have notes. I didn't just have phrases notes. like "killing is dead." I, notes for them I should have been there. It's the human's fault. They abandoned her. Like just nonsense over and over again in this. Like in the and it's just written like sideways, up and down, crooked. He filled in every space on like several of the sheets. Mm -hmm. They're they're a delusional man's writings. If I were to hazard a guess. Basically, it's nonsensical, but most of it, what it really says is that Kalena is dead. The humans, it's the human's fault, and he should have been there. So, as first and first guest, it looks like it was the human's fault that, the, that Kalena's dead, and he should have been there. It apparently has driven him mad. Maybe. After that, I have absolutely no idea. Maybe a human named Matthias, huh? Where, where'd you get the Matthias name? Oh, oh. this is a sketch. Oh, yes, 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 it's far. Um, do we have a map of the area? Uh, no. No, just gold instance. <laughs> um, you said there was a cave up there too, right? No, no, I searched for, searched for a hidden cave, but I didn't find anything. So, we have, what's the next plan? Hey, I, I want to know something first. Hey, what, what is this, uh, what is this table made out of? What, what type of table is it? It basically looks like they took a flat slab of like bark right off of a tree and just threw some stumps underneath it. All right. Uh, well, I mean, I tear all that up. What's on the underside of it all? What's on the underside yeah. is, a, is a complete sketch of like the valley. And you can see several places where there are points where it looks like they may be, from your experience serving in the, in the military, they look like they're like staging points. That's what I'm talking about. That's some drag more instant knowledge right there. That's, no breaking. That's impressive. Well done. What are um? Is there any? What's the closest point? I have no idea. This is something to bring back to those elves. Oh yeah, we're taking this with us. Oh, are we? Very well. We're... Is it a map or is it like a chunk of wood or? Oh, it's a chunk. It's, of, it's oh, carved yeah. into the wood. I could try to sketch it that. You're pretty good. Let's see what I can do. And I try to sketch it out as best I can. Yeah, make a uh, slight hand check. How deep is the carving? The carving? How deep is it? Uh, it's it's just deep enough, like that much. Much uh, twenty. Oh yeah, it's fine. You get the general outlays and everything uh, based upon where you know the position is of of Greencrest, and then looking at like the constellations and the way the moon moon is, you kind of put together a really decent overview of where it is. And kind of based upon that, you you figure that there, the nearest staging point is probably actually uh, maybe about only five miles uh, east of where you guys are positioned uh, in relation to where looking at Matthias's farm is actually just probably near there. Well, if I were a betting man, with the information we gathered, I'd say I said, I say that. <laughs> I said, what? I said, how's chickens do, son? <laughs> about five miles east, there's the next staging point, and that's nearest to Matthias's farm. Please end me. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that's as good a point as any. I don't got nothing else to go on, I said, go for it. So you hear Lumi pipe up. She goes, oh, it looks like, um, it does look like they might have left. Uh, I, I find some recent tracks and some, and maybe a few uh, displaced leaves uh, nearby heading in that direction. So whoever was here, they must have left. Maybe we uh, maybe we sped up their, their plans and they initiated something earlier than they were supposed to. Well then, if so, we want to save a Matthias, we should get moving. Yeah, well, so same plan. Let's have Lumi go out for it. 
Yeah. So we're headed for Matthias' yeah. farm by yeah. way of that staging point. So are we heading to Matthias' farm or are we heading to the staging point? I, I thought they were like really close. Let's hit them both. Yeah. Let's, let's, let, both. let's hit Matthias' farm first just in case the worst happens and they're there. And then we can rotate inward to for his protection, hopefully. <coughs> I would, I would rather hit up the uh, staging point first, see uh, see what's going on there, yeah, and what and what they could be planning for uh, for the farm. I the believe that guy. might be the smart choice, so we can find out what we're up against, Absolutely. in case they do have quite an army. That way, if they do move on the farm, we can come and bind them and tear them down. I do appreciate your support for the farm, though. Yeah, I just. If, uh, if he's in danger, I'd like to get there as soon as possible, but if you think otherwise, might as well. Yeah. To the staging point. To the staging point. Yes. Let's get moving. Oh, we can all travel in a group. I mean, you don't gotta go super far ahead again. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, we, we can do that. I can still stay out front. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, not, you don't have to go super far. Like, a safe distance, like. 10 feet, 15 feet, 20 feet, whatever you feel comfortable. <laughs> so what's the plan? You guys going to head out to the farm or the staging area? Staging area. Staging area. Okay. Definitely staging area. Okay. <clears throat> so you guys trying to get there quickly or what? Ah. I'm not much for stealth. I can't I, if I, I want to move. I don't want to move too fast because if we move really fast, we might not... See like traps and stuff they've they've left behind. Are you saying you want to move at a comfortable rate? I think we should hurry. <laughs> let's just not, move. Let's move. Let's move with a purpose. Let's not move. Let's not be anti. I think is what you're looking for. Yeah, like let's just at a regular rate, like a marching rate. So okay. Do those yeah, tracks look like people who were not in a hurry? Uh, make the survival check. Fourteen plus. That's fourteen. Um, they did a really good job of kind of disguising their numbers and how many. But it, judging upon the impact of some of the uh, the boots or the uh, the feet strides, it looks like they were probably running. All right, let's go. If they're running, they're not uh, traps. They're, they're probably not traps. Oh. All right, let's go. I stay in the back. <laughs> Might be an ambush. So Lumi's up front, right? Uh, yep, and uh, I'll be okay. behind it. All right. So you just you, uh, you climb down the cliff as fast as possible, and you make your way through the woods, just heading in that direct beeline towards the uh, staging area. Um, every once in a while, Lumi glancing back and just continuing to motion you forward, letting you know that she's found some more traces. Uh, every once in a while. You lose track of where the trail is and some of the footprints. Trying to follow these wild elves is like following ghosts. You're just moving through the trees without leaving anything behind. Uh, after about 20 minutes or so at a brisk pace of moving through the thick foliage and you know crossing a, a small creek, you finally start to see in the distance there is a bright orange light far away as you start approaching what you believe is the, the staging area on the map. So beyond the edge of the trees over the top of the forest, you can see a soft glow in the night and possibly like whiffs of, of smoke rising in further up ahead. Does it look like possibly, does the light resemble like a building that's been raised or like, like a, or more like a bonfire? Um, you're not really sure, it's pretty intense. Shit. Well, you can tell us from the color of the smoke that it's definitely recent. Oh, shit. This is, and that's directly all along the lines that we're headed, right? Yep. Looks it's, like Matthias might have been the target then, yeah? That game over for him. Uh, continue forward? Did you want to stop and no, continue. do something? No, no, no. Let's, let's keep go. going. All right. Yeah. Lucian, Lucian, you all right back there? <laughs> <laughs> you see this winded <laughs> sorcerer just like wave. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just wave okay. On. Yeah, so, Let's uh, go. 
So you continue forward, and Lumi eventually just calls you to a stop, and she uh, kind of comes back to you, and she says, uh, I believe this is where they had staged. Uh, I count about maybe 15 sets of individual footprints, including one in heavy uh, leather booting and what looks like the tracks of a large uh, feline of some sort. Probably that panther. Oh, shit. And then, so breaking through it now and covering that distance, you can see that most definitely about 200 yards away or so, there is a large blaze on a couple of structures running wild. Is this the farm, or did they set their like, staging camp on fire? I was like, I don't know how close the farm is to this to this place. I'm gonna pull up the map. 200 yards. Who would like to stay oh, 200 yards? Yeah. Fire. Yeah. 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 Hey, here's a big beacon. This is where we camp. Now let's go attack something. I don't know. It's the farm. We mm -hmm. should hit the staging area still and go to the farm mm -hmm. just in case they've already come back. Yeah. That. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You'll get there. Could be could be wily elf tricks. You never know. So you continuing the staging area then? Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. So <clears throat> Lumi dashes off ahead of you, picking up the pace, and you kind of start to lose track of where she's going. Uh, but after another two and a half minutes or so, you eventually hit this small, this small like hill lock with a, a large stone, and you can see that as you enter it, there's you don't see any elves and you don't see any equipment or anything there. But you see more more signs of, of individuals who had gathered in this space before heading off in the direction of you know, the farm, which is now much closer. And you can see that the main this main house and some silos and um, some of the wooden fencing or a pen where maybe horses were is just fully ablaze at this point. Well, well we need to get closer. See if we can uh, see if I can go help anybody. I mean, it looks like the work is mostly done. Okay. Going out there is risking our lives for a farm that's burned to the ground already. Could be people out there still. We're already risking our lives anyway. I suppose we are. Hey, worst case scenario, we go out to blaze of glory. Hey, I mean, you don't gotta go out there with me. I mean, I appreciate if you just stay in the back and you wash our backs as we go out there. I can do that. Yeah, I'll, I'll watch your back. And I'll go, I'll tag along with you. Maybe I can catch an elf before he kills you. I, I tend to burn things more. <laughs> That's right, weird. Well, okay. Let's go get those elves. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so as you dash through the forest and exit the, uh, the end and start moving through the, uh, the open uh, space and cross the road, you get closer or you hop over a, an outer perimeter fence and keep going inwards in the fire the intensity of it just continues to build up as the heat starts washing over you you approach uh, what you believe is the main home and you can see that there are about eight or nine posts out front that maybe have been hastily raised and you can see the vague outlines of humanoid shapes that seem to have been attached to these posts and upon closer inspection, you can see that the wild elves killed everybody here and staked them to these posts as a warning. And on the man who you assume is Matthias, there's a wooden sign. And in common, it reads that he wants you to bring the man or person responsible for his sister's death to him. Or the attacks in the Central Vale will only continue to escalate. And as you look upon the grisly forms of the mutilated bodies whose throats have been slit, they showed no mercy on anybody. About eight people, including two children, approximately the ages of maybe eight to eleven, were murdered and bonded to these to these posts, and their blood still running down them fresh. Judging by the bodies, you maybe only missed them by about 40 minutes. Fish. There's 
it's not a good thing. This ain't right. I'm not in the slightest. I'm not one for vengeance, but recompense is needed for an action like this. You know these people? That's not the point. The point is that the children there had their lights snuffed out far too soon before they could even have a chance to be something. And that is what is evil here, more than anything else. I don't know who this elf is, or what he thinks he is, but I would like to send him to his god, sooner than he'd like. <clears throat> All right. Did that sign have a name on it, or just bring him to me? Just bring, bring him to me. Yep. Cryptic. cryptic. It's cryptic. Yeah. You didn't leave a name. So are the bodies shaped? Hmm? Are the bodies shaped? You said they're staked up. Do they have? The, does he have them shaped at all? No. Just, just staked up. Mm -hmm. I thought. I thought this was like the dude responsible. He I guess might, not. He might know the man who is. I assume he's connected to him in some way. He's significant somehow. He probably knew where to find the actual killer. Or the elves are just batshit crazy. Well, that seems to be what we're dealing with, isn't it? Oh, didn't we already have his name? The killer? Yeah. 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 Rafana? If I recall correctly. Safana. 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 So that's, that's the yeah. that's Safana's the, the, elf. The, oh, the, S U F A N A. The alleged uh, person behind all this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm that's, sure the man, that's the man with the pant. Uh, pant. <laughs> you know, sometimes uh, it's not all, all that shocking. Elves do some pretty crazy stuff. They don't really care about people that don't live for like a thousand years, so. This is barbaric even for an elf. Uh, I've just seen the ugly underside of what elves can really be. I suppose you're one to talk, though. Yeah, at least I'm honest about it. No. Mm -hmm. Still not a good thing. But either way, I see your, I, I see what you're saying. So but what this do you want to do about this? I would like to kill the man. Well, very slowly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pretty. Good. You were saying you want to send him to his god. Don't don't you guys? I don't know about you, halfsies, but don't you guys just get reborn anyway? So is that really a punishment? Not exactly. Well, how old is he? Few hundred years in solitude would be pretty bad for an elf, I imagine. That too. But generally, when an evil being dies and goes to their god, they still can be punished. There is still punishment for an elf. Alright. It's, hey, it's also possible he might not be reborn if. What do you think the worst that god decides not to? Getting trapped in the abyss? Mm -hmm. I'd like to think it's being locked in a room with no light. No sound for the rest of its life. The abyss. I imagine that's similar sure. to the abyss. Well, do you guys happen to have a portal to the abyss? No. Well, maybe we should make one of our own. Not on me. No. You... Hey, how how uh how how secure is this family uh, put up put up there? Uh, they each basically got one through their hands together. Through their hands. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna pull them out. I'm gonna take it down and put it together. Okay. So, yeah, so he's just one by one pulling them down and laying them on the ground gently. I'm gonna pull out a, uh, out of my adventurer's pack, a small, small compact shovel and a pick. And I'm gonna start kind of like cracking at the ground, getting ready to make a grave. Okay. I'm gonna take the side. I'm gonna stick it in my bag. Orc, you're interested in going back and reporting what we found to those elves while they dig graves? Uh, no, I'm not really interested in going and talking to any elves, really, if I'm being perfectly honest. Alright, well, I'm going to go back, so whoever... I, I think maybe, are you going to really spend the time to dig the graves while the murderers get away? He's waiting for a sign. At the moment, he's waiting for his murderer to come about. His sister's murderer. 
I assume. We don't have the murderer with us. No, but we have two humans. I'm not going to be bait. One of you could very easily be bait. Right. Not so could you. Half of long ears. I can't. I can do a minor illusion. Yes, can I? But I can. He's, on, a, he's can a ranger. I can see through it. Can I see through a hood? I have very elven features. There's no <laughs> hiding it. I'm really? terribly sorry. Look, but he's going to recognize much... the man he's been hunting. He's a ranger, right? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe he doesn't know who. He did probably it. would recognize him by his height. You elves are outrageous. You live forever. He, he probably could study the man. Does he even know the man? I, I assume. It seems pretty personal. It seems kind of generic. Well, if yeah. he knew who did it, he would have already killed that man. I like. Oh, I like to make a uh, a religions check. Uh, would a would a female prior be out of a? Uh, would that be odd? For a funeral prior? Yeah. For. For. A, for a person to be uh, burned to ash would, in the area? I don't know. No, it wouldn't be strange. Wouldn't be strange? It'd be a fairly common practice for the most part. All right. Undead are a problem. Yeah. And the, uh, and the houses are still going? Oh, yeah. At this point, they've mainly completely collapsed in wards, and they're just burning the piles. All right. But it's still, it's definitely still a blaze. What up? Taking so, them down and starting to like dig the graves while you guys are having this conversation is it's been about it's been about thirty five minutes or so of it just burning straight through and collapsing inwards. Yeah. I I think we should uh put the family up on the uh, up in the building. Let it, let it take, let it put them to rest. Yeah. I could burn them without them inside of the building if you prefer. I I always wanted to die in my home. I I but think I as a uh, I think as a family and. This being their home and where their lives were supposed to be uh, lived, that uh, it's only fitting that it all ends here for them in their uh, in their home. Well, I'll help you move bodies. Thanks for that. It's a little hot. Just throwing that out there. I don't mind the heat. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. better. Right. Let's move the bodies and get it done fast if possible. Perhaps uh, bringing this note back, those elves might be more willing to answer. The less polite questions. I agree. Because now, details. now we have weight. Well, the there's very dead people, as far as I understand it, attached to this whole situation. And it's not the first child to be killed. Oh, yeah. No, that child was alive, thankfully. But this is meaningless slaughter. The other one was a, a trade caravan that would hold some weight of purpose. This one, this was meaningless slaughter. Possibly. Well, meaningless to the degree that he has a purpose, but it wasn't a purpose of anything that could be construed as good. Uh, so they just slit their throat. There's no like arrows or anything like that laying around, is there? No. Right. This should be evidence enough, and I tap on my, my back. Well, then, let us burn the bodies. Yeah, so go through the process of uh, using a little bit of twine for my pack just to uh, tie the hands together lightly so we can uh, take them over the building as close as we can get without getting hurt. We'll throw them, throw them up there. So. All right. So you you bind them together in a, in a traditional uh, in a traditional pose, and as you lay each body into the uh, the burning uh, building. You kind of wait till they're all there, and then give a traditional. You give a very traditional like thanks or welcoming. There's a passage for ushering the dead and unto the uh, to the veiled queen into her collection, since all souls pass through her fortress of memories before they go to their <clears throat> planes of alignment to live the rest of their lives and join kind of the ethereum as a part of the uh, what the, the world. All that takes about. Did you see the size of that? Fifteen minutes or so. Twenty minutes. It's pretty small, actually. Why? Mm-hmm. All right. If you're done, there's things to do. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna meet up with those elves again. 
They yeah. said they were heading to the to the town, right? Trying uh -huh. to maintain appearances. Let's either go back to them or try tracking these widows through their woods. We have their spots that they tend to camp at on this map. Oh. We'll need bodies. Let's go to the other house. Bodies. I mean, we'll need people. Operation Elf Shield. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like the way you think. Or... The more, the more, the more time I spend yeah. around you, the more work you get. I'd like not to laugh, but it was pretty funny. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's just how I am. So, and then if they're at the town, that also lets us figure out if there's any humans we can be like, hey, what the fuck. Or just say he looks like him, one or the other? No, no, I mean like, actually maybe get some answers, because you don't go that kind of crazy without something actually happening. It sounds like his sister died. Yeah, yeah but the maybe. whole, someone's responsible for it, probably some dirtbag human, you know, all that shit. There might be something to do that that we can like, ask about, since we'll be back in the town. Somebody in town probably knows something. At least somebody the mayor knows somebody might knows be a, something. Might be a good place to start. And if not, we're stationary. We can just start checking camps and hopefully kill them. Well, and then something to remember is, according to the note, this person had some sort of responsibility to his sister somehow. So probably someone working with or hanging out with elves all the time. Well, the mayor gave us a job to do. So did the elves, or a little tasking. We should at least go back and report to the mayor. He also needs to know about this farm. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So, it's, so we're all done here. I'm done here. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Of course, share the plan with Wimmy yeah. to head back to the town. Yeah. She agrees. Um, following the road, uh, Greencrest is only about two miles, two miles away up north up the road. It's a a quiet, a quiet night as you move further and further away from the fire and the farmstead. Uh, you don't pass anybody on the road. You see a Greencrest come over the top on its small rise, overlooking the valley. As you enter the town, it's late at night. So it's quiet. Some of the street lamps are on, but there's nobody out there. You don't even see a town guard, and you don't see any signs of any of the, uh, the wood elves nearby or in town. None of the town guard? No. It's quiet. So you make your way back to the Dusty Dog Inn. <clears throat> uh, you don't see the, uh, the clerk at the front desk, and the tavern's already been shut down for the night. So you just make your way back to your rooms and... Can I, can I roll a perception or some form of check to see if this is odd that there's like nothing going on at all or is it that Well, late? we came back at like, what, 2 a.m.? Yeah. 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 Well, I thought it was really late. Yeah, late. Yeah. I, I figured <laughs> that's why, so I brought it up. I thought it was like the Langoliers for a second. I like, oh, no, we're no, not. It's like 2 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> you get where I was going. So I was like, you're like 2 a.m. Okay, never mind. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay, cool. Or does it? Or does it? Or does it? <laughs> no, we've never been to this town. How busy is it at night? Yeah, yeah maybe on maybe on this day of the week they throw ragers until four a.m. Yeah, <laughs> don't know. So it is weird. The Green Crest party don't stop. Well, fuck. Is there any ragers going on? Like, yeah. <laughs> You'll hear anything. Um, slight barking, How's dogs, that? and some some birds, some pigeons cooing. And a flight of doves flies past, but that, that's about as much as you see activity-wise in town. How high's a guy got a roll to get a rager around here? <laughs> Come on. All right. So you go back to your rooms, um, and you, you notice uh, when you arrive that uh, the door to Amareth's room is slightly ajar. It looks like there's like a candle going in there. <laughs> Well, I walk in and close the door behind me. <laughs> yeah, so, as you open the door, Did uh, they were just acquaintances? and close it, you can see that this uh, you can see that this this red-skinned tiefling Amareth is she's sitting in the corner and she's compiling notes and just scribbling furiously. 
and it looks like she has like a piece, like almost like a strange rock with some calligraphy on it from some language that you can't really make out. And she's sitting there just furiously like sketching and drawing and, and going through and you can see she's taking notes and just is adamant about what she's doing. She doesn't even really notice you enter the room. Brown. But when you Brown. close the door behind you, she turns and sees you and, um, well, it, it's about time for you, that you showed up. Sure. Yeah. You, you left your door open. I did. I did. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not even going to ask. Fine. Yeah. Should I lock it? Um, I mean, if you don't mind. We should probably have some. We should probably have some privacy in order to, to discuss some of the things that we're going to discuss. Definitely. Have I you been? Uh, yeah. How have you been? How was the trip here? Uh, she cares. Well, there was a blackout. I'm not sure. We'll discuss more privately. Hmm. Well, the findings of this archaeological dig over in the old town of Warren has brought to light some interesting revelations about the region and I would like to share them with you later at, an at another time. As it's getting late, I would really very much appreciate going to bed and then maybe broaching the subject later tomorrow. Right. Maybe I believe some of this directly relates to maybe not directly to us per se, but to areas of our interest, shared interests. All right. Okay. I have all the notes and I have well, a ton of information to give you for you to go over. And she takes this big pile of papers and she hands them to you. I'll read these tonight. <laughs> if you don't mind. I would like you at least uh, caught up on the subject matter so that when we start going, when I start presenting some of my thoughts on on it to you, you're you're on the same pace as I am. Well, you made more progress than I was making, so I'm glad you called me down. Yeah, so am I. Yeah. How have you uh, been? Oh, uh, I met some people on the caravan on our way. Odd bunch, really, but they show some skill. We could probably use them. Good. You'll need you'll need strong people in your life in the future. Yeah. I assume that means you're gonna disappear on me again at some point. I might, but it, it's never it's never out of any kind of maliciousness. It's always sometimes it's just best that we separate, given the uh, the strange nature of our relationship. Right. Mm. All right. Juicy. Uh, that's the way it needs to be. We'll catch up more after I read what you got. Okay. I'll be in my room. All right. Well, I'll see you uh, later in the day then. Also, oh, you're still a dick for not getting me a room. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, the room. I thought you might find that funny. <laughs> I leave. Yeah. As <laughs> soon as you close the door behind you, you see the light from underneath the door go out. And you hear a... Uh, are you all standing in the hall? Oh, everybody, they all went back to their, yeah. their individual rooms. <laughs> I know you were listening. What if I was listening when you, to the door? When you step into the hallway, um, there's a brief moment where you feel like you step into the longest hallway you've ever seen. And there's a dark shadow cast at the end. But just as soon as you make like eye contact with it, it's, it's gone. And the darkness kind of recedes and you see yourself standing in a familiar spot back in the inn. All right, so I just kind of crack my neck and then walk in my, to my room. Yep. Riken's got demons. So, is there anything else anybody needs to take care of at night in particular? No. No. Research! <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna research so hard, guys. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. All right, so uh, at that then you, everybody gets a good night's rest. Um, some of you a little bit less than you would have hoped, thinking about 
the Matthias farm and the Slain family. Yeah, and just the gruesome na- the gruesome bad. nature in which they were disposed of by the wild elves or the ranger. The, uh, just in your mind, the slash marks and blade marks you recognize from scimitars or elvish swords, 100%. The clean cuts is just natural for the way that their craftsmanship. Um, and with that being said, uh, we're going to take our break early real quick so that we can fine tune some of these things so thank you for watching if you're watching i hope that you find this interesting uh we'll be back in about 15 15 20 minutes ish or so so just hang in with us once again we'll give another shout out another audio and everything is better to jexodus and the bearded family who we're super happy to be a part of and to like start building this relationship with with uh if any of you are bearded family members you know just you know thanks for hanging out thanks for watching or thanks for uh hosting us if that's the case, and uh, we'll be back. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Later, bro. <clears throat> Hello. Hey. Oh. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for uh, tuning in. Thanks for being patient, hanging out. You know, we're trying to just uh, refine some of those technical issues and really take a look at you know the uh, software and the, and the hardware and make sure it's all it's all jiving. And it seems like for the most part, we might have already kind of figured out. What it is we need to do and how to get it done quickly. So it's it, it's it's all coming together. So just thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. Um, and uh, the new name plaques are up. The, yeah, we put up the name plaques. There you go. Now you guys know who's who. We had those made way earlier yesterday, but somebody forgot to put them up. So you know, I'm not gonna name names, but it might be a bard. <laughs> just saying. You might write a story about it. You yeah. never know. Yeah. The missing nameplates written by Thielen. <laughs> Thielen. Oh, he named names. It's on. Yeah. It's on. <laughs> oh, no. All right. Let's you fight. never know my real name. Let's fight. fight me. All right. So, you wake up in the morning, roused uh, by the smells of breakfast and the sounds of birds outside the window, the sun shining. It's about... It's not early, early in the morning, but it's about 8 a.m. or so. Town's already been up and going. Most of the people are walking. The stores are open. Oh, yeah, well, we got shit to do. I get up, and as I walk down the hall, I start, I bang on each person's door. Get up! Time to, I guess, save people or something. I bang on the door as I make my way down to the lobby. There. We got barbed shit to do. What, what time of morning is this? About 8 a.m. or so. 8 a.m.! I'm definitely already, or so. I'm definitely already down. When you knock on my door, you get no reply. Mm-hmm. No. Don't make me come back up there. <laughs> You're not gonna like me when I come back up there. Well, if you went downstairs, you'd see me. Oh, well, there <laughs> you go. Fine. Got me all worked up over nothing. You worked rage. yourself up. <laughs> That's fair. That's true. I rage. <laughs> I rage anyway. I'm so bad. <laughs> How oh, dare he not come yeah. down? Oh, he was yeah, coming yeah. down. When I, when I get down there, I look over at our, at our little wizard friend. Uh, you know, you need to get your rest. Were you up all night or just wake up early? I'm not a wizard. Whatever. Magic. Uh. Yeah, so you, you're already down there. You've yes, been served breakfast. Uh, and they're, and they're, it looks, from the looks of their... They're, uh, they have these large roasted sausage and like mushrooms with a with a light ale on the side early in the morning. Gotta eat early before yeah. people eat my food. And some like oat biscuits. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'll, I'll take me some of that. I I turn towards <laughs> some of the staff and I say, "Oh, I have one of these. Having bring another one." And I sit there, <laughs> joined by. <clears throat> companion. I don't know if they'll bring you anything. I already finished eating. What they know what you ordered. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't need your attitude. Oh, I'm just giving you a hard time. Uh, I banged on all their doors. I'm hoping they'll be down soon. I see you guys all go downstairs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I come ready down. for the day. Okay. Mm-hmm. I definitely stop and get an ale before I sit down. All right. Yeah. So you come up to the uh, the barkeep. It's the yeah, the same uh, light brown haired girl as it was before early in the morning, uh, and she just kind of gives it to you. You know, puts in the orders for food that you guys are eating. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you all go yeah. and sit down. There's uh there's about eight other patrons there in the morning. They it seems like they kinda booked up for the night for the most part. So there's a couple of 
what looks like a couple of elves, um, moon elves, and there's a few gnomes and and some maybe merchants from uh, across the Grey Spires as well. Judging from their accent, it seems like they're probably from Bravatus. Yeah. So what's the plan, guys? That cat. <laughs> We're gonna go talk to the 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 people leader, the mayor. We're gonna find these elves wherever they're at. Well, we're already in town, so I, I vote for the mayor first. Oh, yeah. I yeah, second that. Agreed, because worst case scenario, they have a delegation, and it's, it's from the elves. All right. Well, let's finish up eating quickly so we can take care of this mess. Get paid. So, yeah. I'll wait for my food to arrive. I eat it rapidly. <laughs> <laughs> well then, yeah. now that we're all done eating, do we want to proceed forward and go meet the mayor? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I assume we just go to his house. Oh, Seemed yeah, kind of informal last time. Mm -hmm. A little bit. He knows who we are now. Yeah, we can go back to his manor. Shouldn't be any problem. No, so we may even run back into the uh, captain of the guard. So uh, that's true. Yeah. So we're gonna go go to the manor. Okay. And discuss things of grave importance. Of grave importance. Grave importance. Yeah, so you come out into the street. Uh, it's fairly busy today. It seems like there's a, it's a probably a heavy market day or heavy store store day. There's tons of people out. Most of the population, as a matter of fact, seems like it's pretty much out. out. Um, news is, is already circulated about the destruction of the Matthias farm. Uh, you're surprised to hear that this early in the day. And you see a high presence of militia guardsmen uh, on alert. There's far more of them than you've seen before in town, out and about, in groups of about three to four. Uh, you don't see uh, the Captain Ladio anywhere, but no. as you approach the um, <clears throat> the mayor's manor, a knock on the door and the uh, his <clears throat> serviceman opens and you know asks you to come inside. And you can see in the parlor, you can see standing with his back to you, he's looking out the bay window that told us is in there. You can also see, uh, you can also see a Ladio and you can uh, see- the um, chair. Here. You can see Eladio, and you can also see uh, uh, Nerella as well in the room with them, having a conversation. Yeah. And the service, the servant, he's just well. It, when you're ready, you approach. <clears throat> well, yeah, I uh, step forward, and uh, I make my way uh, toward the gathering, <coughs> toward the back room. Okay. Yep. So as you guys go forward, walk in. They're deep in the middle of the conversation, and you can you could you pick up the sense of like raised voices here and there. And as you approach, they're arguing about uh, about them pursuing them and like basically gathering up the the militia and waging a straight war against the wild elves. And Tolvis is strongly advocating for trying to eliminate them. Uh, by force as opposed to through treaty and while uh, Nerella completely disagrees but Eladio seems to have the same uh, feel the same way about it as they told us turns and says oh the adventurers are here let's let's see what they what they have to say they spent the night out there and you'd see uh, Nerella turn she has her her cowl down or her cloak put away and she's just wearing her leather armor with her long brown hair hanging out over the shoulders. I'm assuming they're around the table, right? Yeah. They're sitting in the same seats that you guys sat in. Alright, I, right. I walk up and I reach into my bag and I pull out that the wooden sign that was hanging from the corpse last night and I slam it down on the table all dramatic. Hmm. found this last night! Must you be so aggressive about it? Oh my god. These are things they need to hear. What he's not saying is that we made it to the Matthias farm. Matthias's farm. 
Unfortunately, we're a bit too late after visiting their main camp. Upon arriving, everything was destroyed, and the <coughs> people of the little village were strung up and killed and put on display with that sign on their chest. Well, Matthias's chest. Yeah, so, uh, Nirella picks up the sign and she reads it, and then she throws it to Eladio, who catches it and takes a look at it and presents it to Mertolvis. Goes over. Well, it seems as though we have a, a clear cut motive, and, uh, for what he's trying to accomplish or what and how we can deal with him, but I have no idea what he means. I don't know. How do we find out who's responsible for the death of his sister? And he looks to Nerella, who's kind of looking down. Maybe if someone up. was more forthright about the details, and I look over at her. Hmm. With my intimidating glare. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I like the term weird, but that's fine. Uh, so she looks up at you and gives you this like very direct glance and looks back at the rest of the party, making eye contact. Well, there's really not much more that we that we know. I we all we know is that he he lost his sister and and he from that point forward we lost track of him. He slipped away from us, and we hadn't seen him for for the last three years since the end of the, uh, the Orc Wars. He's been in hiding or out of touch. Well, he lost his sister, right? Mm. How Do you have any idea how that happened? I, all we really know was th that there was uh, some sort of fighting, and and she was in the Central Vale, and, and she was killed. We don't really know. He, he wasn't exactly forthcoming, and I don't know him personally. And her name? Oh. Um, you wish not to speak of the dead, but there's more dying because of it. I believe uh, it may have been Kalena. I believe. I'm, I'm not sure. It's been a long time since I heard the name. Um, and I pull out the papers that have mm -hmm. all the Elvish writing on it. Mm -hmm. And I pass it over. Is this the right name? She grabs them, sorts through them. Uh, well, it looks like you've handed me the ramblings of a complete madman, but I do see. The name seems to match if this indeed is his handwriting or from him himself uh, as the the calligraphy and lines and the elvish and the dialect is seems as though it's coming from someone who's a skilled either user of the language or is from within the elven people themselves and she just kind of sets them on the table seems so, to seems to go on about stuff in a, in a way that makes it seem like some kind of human would have been responsible for his sister in some way, like, should have been there. Like, and I turned to the, to the, the guard, the human guards. Said, Does anyone, have you guys worked with the elves? Maybe some failed operation, uh, some close relations in, in ways where a guy would be responsible for an elf. It's like we're trying to piece together this puzzle. They kind of take a look at each other and told this speaks up. I'm... I, if it happened during the Orc Wars, there's a chance that there was tons of encounters and battles. I, I don't really know. I don't really know. It, it, it could have happened at any time anywhere. Maybe we should be asking you if you know anything about something like this that happened. We obviously don't know. Uh, it would have happened underneath someone else in some other time. The militias were spread and, and scattered, and who knows? It might not even have involved the Green Crest itself. These, the man has obviously lost his mind. We don't know what... Truly, if he's... I mean, who knows? If, if I may speak up... You may. I wasn't addressing you. No. Hmm. You have my permission. I don't need it. With the... <laughs> With what's mm. going on, was there any chance that uh, Sofana knows exactly who killed his sister? And I'm speaking to uh, Narella. I mean, it's possible. 
he has had years to figure it out. He obviously knows his, who his target is, or he wouldn't have written it so clearly. He didn't use a name. He's expecting the people to do the work for him and bring him whoever's responsible. I, was I don't believe he needs a name. He knows who he's after and believes that the guilty party will probably come to light through some other means. Oh. Maybe this warning is maybe this isn't even directed at you or even passerbys. Maybe it was meant to be brought here to the mayor. Is the mayor kind of shaken or disturbed by the sign anyway? No. He seems just in general since you've entered the room, he seems pretty pretty uh pretty upset. And uh mayor, do yes. you know do you know of what happened or transpired? This is your town. No, oh, I've only been I've only been mayor for a couple of years. I did serve in the in the militia. Who was the mayor before? Do you know of any stories of uh, the happenstances, happenstances of an elf, uh, elf girl? <clears throat> You're asking about specific details in, in the midst of a full-scale conflict. I mean, for all we know, this was a minor skirmish between a dozen people or so. It wasn't a full-scale operation or, or battle. Then who was, do you think the mayor before you might know? If he's still alive. Oh, unfortunately, he passed just last season of old age. The only thing I could think of it would be to set a trap. If anyone else has any ideas, maybe well, offer up a guilty party to draw him out, and then we attack. We, we set a trap. We just fight them in all-out combat. We know some of their spots where they like to stage, or. If you want to just avoid all the problems, to a certain extent, you just march out the whole town and let them pick whoever it is. Line them up. Kind of thing. And what's to stop him from killing everyone else? I don't know, seeing as he's after one guy, so it's just, uh, I'm, I'm throwing stuff out there and seeing what sticks. Fair enough. What do you think, Norella? Do you think that might work against a deranged man that you may or may have not have known? I believe he knows exactly who he's looking for and exactly what he wants. And I don't believe he's coming for him unless he's forced to. Can we like... If he freaking... He seems to be the only fucking person who knows. So can we just ask him, say, like, write a letter smoke signal or something and then he can just tell us who the fuck he wants it is irritating that he's being so cryptic yeah we could if we wish to just hand over the guilty party we could just even then even if we hand over the guilty party what if he's not happy well you guys seem to want to kill him anyway for no oh, absolutely baby murdering and stuff very much so what do you think about doing, Mayor? Well, based upon the information that I've received <clears throat> and what uh, and, and the debate and and some of the counsel from Eladio, I believe that personally, I'm on the side of launching a full-scale operation with maybe the assistance of Brethor in finding him and locate locating his his hideout and, and killing everybody. But. Unfortunately, our emissary here, a hundred percent, does not believe that that would do well for our relations with the Silver Realm and the Wood Elves. They want him for themselves. Then what do you propose? To the emissary? <clears throat> to the, no, yeah, no. he's terrorizing your land. He's your problem to deal with, the elves. Who cares what they want? I do. Well, well, if they're gonna deal with it, they need to fucking just do it. Well, they are here. Even if it was to show up underneath false pretenses, although they knew that they were looking for the self ranger to begin with, they're still here. So now that you know this, and I turn to the, the elves, and I say, now that you know this, if you want to handle it, what's your master plan, wait him out, just like let all the, let all the humans die, it'll die of old age and it'll go away. 
No, we're looking for him. That's our plan. Did you show them the map? Sure. He, he is the enemy. The Silver Realm has made it absolutely clear that an act of aggression, unwarranted aggression against the Wild Elves, unless we know who, what, or why, what their motive is for allying themselves with him, or what is at play, that an act of aggression against the Wild Elves is as much of an act of aggression as it is against the Silver Realm itself. We will not tolerate the slaying, unnecessary slaying of our kin, who may not know any better and may be being manipulated by powers much greater than themselves. I uh, pull out the map and I throw it on the table. And this is the location of this staging area. Staging areas. Probably dead drops. She kind of picks it up. Looks over it. This seems to match some of our initial scouting reports of the area. Eladio, would you would you mind taking making copies of this for yourself and for your men to harden your defenses in some of these areas? And she he comes over and he picks it up and and he's been especially quiet this whole time. He hasn't really said anything other than the minor agreements he's made with Tolvis on certain points. The further escalation, it could lead to conflict at a very minimum, trade sanctions or restrictions moving southward to Rohenheim from the Central Vale. Our people do not take the death of their own people lightly, especially from those we would consider allies. So, you find Sofana, or we find Sofana, and we can probably end the conflict how many other drop zones are on this map? That's what I was about to ask. Um, yeah. yeah, how many? There's ten. Ten total? Ten. There's ten. And ten total, but we know of two. Right? There's there ten more. There's ten total. Okay, so there's eight. Including the one you already went to. Yeah. We only went in to various one. areas, including off the other side in the uh, the forest, on the opposite side of the valley. So there's nine other ones. There's nine other locations that he might be. <clears throat> That's yeah. too many. In the Dawnwoods yeah. Forest. There's several. It seems that they're completely scattered. So if he expects someone to deliver this big killer. Do you have any prisoners? No, no prisoners. We don't have any. No Ladio finally speaks up. No, I don't believe so. None of our patrols have caught anybody. They're far too quick and agile. They've been evading our our scouts and our, our outposts and our guard's eyes. I think it means human prisoners for bait. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, any human prisoners? I mean, we have a few individuals who are in, in the jails and on minor charges such as thievery or suspected thievery and conning people with yeah. bad wares, but I mean, again, I, if he knows who he's looking for, there's no tricking them. That may be one of the reasons why he left it so vague, so that we would bring the guilty party, or that you couldn't pull such a ruse by throwing somebody else in. Is if you bring any... anybody he doesn't recognize, he might assume that we've tried to trick him in some manner, and violence might only escalate. Mm. Okay. I do stand firm that any attack on the region, on Greencrest itself in this force, will be met with deadly force. 100%. We will defend ourselves. And that's the least that I'd be willing to do. Well, we've already done so. When the initial elves shot fire arrows at you. Yes. That was before we knew what was at stake, though. <clears throat> and that's what I sent you there for, was to locate them. So that we could find them and possibly decimate them. But unfortunately, the relations with the Silver Realm by our emissary here has quite... It's complicated. Everything from this point forward. So, so what do you propose? I look over at the elf. What, what do you propose? We split up and start taking drop zones one at a time. Well, I propose that you stay out of it completely, and that we find him, and bring him to justice. 
Obviously, right. based on the way that you've approached things, personally, it'd be best if he fell into us anyways. Oh, Farius. No, family died last night. We took care of the bodies. And that was before a building in this town got burnt down. So I'm wondering what's going to happen at night if you don't find them. We may not find them for days. We have to check the staging points and try to track them down and find the trail. So the human lives lost. We're not allowed to respond to that. You threaten war if we attack your people, but I assume that if the same threat came towards you, it would be met. What? You gonna come burn down Greencrest? We very men white. Elves, right? Yeah. You're telling me. Human life doesn't matter much, does it? Honorable, prideful, but you know, their problems are the only ones that matter. Oh, not much of an alliance, if you ask me. Regardless, it's not our policies that put this into place, and it's not our fault that he's done this. It's not us who encroach on nature and cut down forests for lumber and drive the wild insane. It's human civilization that's responsible. Elves, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds like, you know, you miss the part where you drive each other insane and then have each other fight. And you shoot fire arrows at little villages and hide and play tricks in the woods. As someone who lives between the two, we are both in the wrong, whether we see it or not. People are dying, and let's focus on that. Let's not worry about who's an elf or who's a human at the moment. Let's worry on the fact that we have a deranged elf killing people. Yeah, it's the principles of the rules of engagement. The rhythm. So she slams her fist on the table. No orc will ever tell people about the principles of engagement. <laughs> Standing here with your heritage and where you come from. I just have to say, if someone's gonna live, it's gonna be me. You might think that, but an arrow in the dark could change that in a moment, couldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it could. Either way, we have a deranged elf killing people. If we can help by simply finding him, it's worth doing. I don't know what we all agree upon, but that is where my boat lies is that we help find, because better than just your group, our group as well. More eyes, more distance travel, the faster this gets done. The faster that everyone leaves happy. Not that the people's currently lost, but the people who are still here and can be lost. Every life matters, and every minute we stand here bickering, another life gets closer to being snuffed out. So what's your approach? We only have real one option. We go out and look at every staging area. What else can we do? Sitting here. We let the militia and the town guard ready as best they can, and we go out and do what we can and what we're good at, which is finding a problem and solving it. If the giants were anything to go by, when something gets in our way, we're pretty good at getting it out of our way. That's what I would do and what I would wager on. What everyone else has to say, that matters too. We are a group. We must decide together. That's also assuming they allow us to help. She doesn't seem too willing. Realistically, she can't stop us from doing it either. Without killing us. Doesn't. Not necessarily but far from my list of possibilities. You could, but why turn down help? Why? Faster this because we don't trust you. We witnessed you as you slaughtered and cut down our kin with little to no remorse. Just Once already. May I, I, may I say something, around. at least in our defense? It was self-defense. If I already explained it once to you. There are possibly factors far outside of your understanding or ability to deal with but that we do have the resources to deal with. Yes, so if, it if something were to happen like yeah. that on your soil, you would respond as best you can as well, even if the, even if the same mm -hmm. factors were inclined. We responded to the best of our knowledge in the best way we can. 
and I apologize for the lives lost. May mm -hmm. their souls return to Corellian and return home and be reborn again. And I off offer my humblest apologies for what transpired in the life I took. But please, let us help you and make this go faster so both everything sits well with you and the mayor and us. The more lives lost is the it's what is worse for everybody. Please, I beseech you. Make a persuasion check. Persuade! What? Persuade! can't be persuasive. <laughs> <laughs> 18. Bard can't be persuasive. No. You may very well mean everything that you say. But regardless, we have more resources and I have more men at my disposal. We don't need you and your group getting out of the way, in the way. We don't plan to investigate. We plan to stage, scout, and watch the areas and wait for his arrival. And at that point, attack him and only him and subdue him and take him back to the Silver Realm where he will be tried and imprisoned for his crimes. That sounds great. I think we should just let him do it. Then the mayor speaks up. <clears throat> Eladio, given the resources and the strain that we have, do you believe that we can pull in a tighter cordon? The emissary seems unwilling to allow us to send these adventurers out to handle this issue. They don't want our interference. So is there some other tasks that we may be able to put them to to help free up resources that we're using elsewhere? He uh, he's turns and... Um, yes, there are, there are multiple other areas that we could possibly utilize these individuals to help free up resources for the defense of Greencrest if it comes to that. We do have an initial belief, what we thought were smaller numbers, but given tracking and some scouting reports, it seems that the Wild Elves are being drawn to the area in much larger numbers than we initially anticipated. We may be looking at, at hundreds of, of wild elves staged in the area or ready to attack. Um, yes, I, I could most definitely use their assistance. Alone we have um, reports of uh, bugbears and, and goblins in, in the deep canyon passes raiding people and, and attacking travelers as they go to and fro. And, and there's also the smugglers in the, in the ruins of Warren as well that are if removing those two obstacles would probably free up at least at least 20 to 30 uh, men in arms or militia guardsmen in order for the, for the defense of Greencrest. If we can tighten the area, tighten the nets or spaces in between some of our outposts or, or patrols, it may make it far more difficult for them to endanger the people in general. It would be easier to, per se, have more road patrols so that things like the Matthias farm wouldn't happen again. That would be applicable of such a thing. We should help in the town's defense. If we can't go out there and find them, the very least we can do is stick around here and lend a hand. Well, I suppose since I'll be living here. Yeah. Lucian, you've been quiet through all of this. What do you think? Well, I would have liked to get back to my research, but where's the dragon going? Anywhere it fucking wants. <laughs> That's a very good Probably point. Not. That's a very good point. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it, but whatever. Let the elves kill, kill each other, whatever. We're still gonna get paid, right? For other stuff. We help out. Oh, yes, yeah, so I can have Eladio settle the, uh, the debt of your prior expense. Alright. Well, that's something. What did we agree to? 100 gold apiece again. Yeah. That seems perfect for me. Mm. Eladio, from the, from the personal treasury, can you please retrieve the gold for these gentlemen? So he bows and, and leaves the room. I and imagine he's... this is where Lumi pipes up and says, And lady. And lady. <laughs> and, lady. and lady. Fair enough. 
Also, and then if we so um, Nerella uh, stands up and well, it seems as though that we've come to an agreement. Then we will handle tracking down the rogue ranger, and you will see to freeing up the resources of the town and defending it better in case he does find a way to strike or decides in his inane madness to attack regardless of the outcome or strength, which is a possibility for someone who seems to have completely lost his mind or been overcome with grief. Yeah. Break a leg. I mean it. So she gets up and leaves the room. Then you see her three other, other Wood Elf guards that you didn't even know this were in the room follow her outwards. And as she leaves, she actually passes a woman as she comes in. Say, uh, she's, she's a tall woman with dark hair and she's wearing this like simple gray mantle with a white shirt and a, and a, and a blue bustier and she enters the room she you can see though that she has like this scar on her left cheek just oh she bows to the uh, the wood elf who gives her a nod and she enters the room and Tolvis responds oh my my dear I'm glad that you've finally returned from uh, your trip to to Anvil and, she comes over and embraces him, and you know they kiss. And he's like, uh, "Unfortunately, you gentlemen weren't here to meet my my wife the last time. This is uh, Misha Brayard." And she says, "Nice to meet you all." Brayard, was it? Brayard. Brayard. It's unfortunate that we might meet under such extenuating circumstances. The uh, it's this is terrible. I've only quite been informed by our doorman about the company that we had here. Been away for some time. Mm, can I roll a perception check to, feel like, to see if I feel like she's hiding any information? Would that be inside, inside check? Inside, inside thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Sure, go ahead. I believe every word she says. Would you roll? She's definitely a one plus So well. Four. So really low. Four. Cool. Four. Um, <laughs> No, I mean, nothing seems out of place. She seems like, uh, I mean, she was out of town. The mayor said, confirmed that she was out of town. She doesn't really seem, like, super upset about what's been going on, but there might be, like, a distance there because she's been gone for a little while. Yeah, lucky you made it back, murder yourselves and all. Oh, well, I have, I have my own personal guard. Quite skilled. Hopefully, good thing you didn't have to use them. Possibly find out they weren't enough. Anyway, we've been doing work around town, helping out, doing good things, mm. and getting paid. By the way, in your in your names, why don't you introduce yourselves? Oh, I am uh, Thal Thalen, the traveling bard. Hello, Thalen. Pleasure to meet you. My name is Riken. I'm a scholar. Hello, Riken. I'm Axtroth Alpharus. Hello, Alpharus. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm, I'm Lucian. I am somewhat of a researcher. Oh, hello, Lucian. And Luthop. you. Luthop. Luthop. independent operator. I can see that. Yeah. Quite large. Yeah. Takes a lot of training. And your, uh, and your curious friend. Lumi's oh, yeah. like just like running her, kept running her paw along this painting, like her finger, like tracing it. Nibbly pinch. Pulls it back together. What? <laughs> <laughs> she introduces herself. As no, it's interesting. I've I've heard of Tabaxi, but I've never actually met one before. Yeah, and she's been a told finder. they're fascinating. She's a finder of things. You ask her for something, she'll find it. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah, it's this thing mm -hmm. she does. It's weird. Well, it's it's nice meeting you all, but I am quite tired from the journey along the road, so I, I believe I will retire to my private quarters for the night. Or I'll see you later, dear, for, for dinner. Oh, yes, yes, my dear, my love. We'll see you later, then. We have arrangements for dinner tonight. And so she leaves the room. I, I believe that concludes our business. You can meet up with Eladiel and go over any of the details and figure out what might need to be dealt with first at your discretion. I believe a hundred. I believe a hundred gold per task is is quite fair compensation wise. Per person. Like per before. person. Man, sounds great. Mm -hmm. Been a lot more than 
average guard. Eladio comes and he has a book and he has a small, a very small chest and he uh, counts out the, the gold, the hundred pieces, and he pays you each out individually. Oh, I'm going to add that to my inventory sheet right now. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> add that bad boy in. <laughs> Cha ching! And I count it, I make sure it's all there. Double check. A hundred, hundred this time? Yeah. Can you get that high, my friend? This is just general curiosity. I'm not trying to be insulting. This is absolute, honest curiosity. I know how to count. No, it isn't. It's insulting. I don't mean it as such. It's not. Not your, many people in even your human intention human. doesn't actually mean a lot when you insult a person. Not even many humans can get to a hundred. Okay. It's is impressive it? that he can. It means he's well educated, and it makes him a better person. Well, I believe yeah, this no. concludes our, our business for the day, gentlemen. Yes, it does. Yeah. So. Thank Sorry. you for your time. Goodbye, Mr. Yes. Excuse my rude behavior. At least, yeah, at least. Yeah. So the doorman shows you out, and um, Eladio accompanies you out into the to the front court, uh, where the uh, the ladies' uh, wagon is still there, and they're taking care of the horses and stuff, and checking on them, checking their horseshoes, and getting ready to move them around the back and park it. Well, well where are we needed? There are a couple of especially important issues in town, but I don't want to un. I don't want you to underestimate the tedious nature of, or the precarious nature of what's what's possibly could unfold here. Um, losing trading rights or relations or safe passage through elven land south of the Rhoneheim would directly cut off the Central Vale from the Southern Allies, and would make it make life far more difficult than it has been and currently is in the past, and would make rebuilding efforts that the mayor's spearheaded far more difficult as Greencrest was a smaller town most people in the area remember when Warren used to be the largest town but it was burnt during sundered during the orc wars and everybody relocated and when he was elected mayor most people see him as a hero he did serve during the orc wars as well as as well as his wife I believe uh, so I should have the was she a the uh, scar? Was she a yeah. fighter? If you don't mind me asking. From what I understand, she's an especially gifted combatant and fencer. Oh shit! She seems such a lady. Yes, she comes. Don't let her gentle features in nature fool you. There's there's someone there's somebody underneath there who would probably kill a man just as soon as be friendly to him if he ever wronged her in any way. I would appreciate that. Mm. Kind of hot. Not gonna lie. But aside from that... Hmm? No. But aside from that, there are two issues. So realistically, it, it, it really depends on what you would rather do first. Bandits or wildlife care? I think that was mentioned. Yeah, well, the, the bugbears and the goblins have been kind of an issue as of late, and they've been... It, it's a minor thorn, but still a thorn none the same. I have at least two patrols dedicated to trying to protect the roads, and we can't seem to find exactly where they're camping. Uh, we do believe that they might be staying in a cave nearby. Uh, any attempts to actually find them, they normally scatter as soon as they meet resistance of any type, and then... There's no tracking them from that point forward. Too bad you can't sit them on the elves. <laughs> what was the um, other task? There oh, any... there's smugglers and they've been running uh, out of Warren. What are they smuggling? Oh, uh, I don't know. Whatever goods. We've, uh, we know that they're there. We haven't seen them there. We haven't, scouts haven't caught them during the day. But we've seen the remnants of small rafts and package, care packages unaccounted for that sometimes wash up on shore, get destroyed in the river, or end up in the lake. We go after smugglers, we get money and stuff. Do we have to? No. No, don't, don't look at me. No. Thank you. <laughs> Out loud. But on a more local, I would like to ask you for a small personal favor that it seems that you are far more capable of probably dealing with as you are outsiders and unknown to most people. 
the regulars wouldn't really know to avoid you. They might look to you as a new business opportunity. It seems as though there are a couple of, there's a set of con artists in town who've been selling people bad magic potions and trinkets, and I would very much, very, very much like to have them brought to me. Con artists, you say? They know us all too well, and the people, everyone stands out. I, there's, there's probably not a militia guardsman in town that would be able to make their way into this underground racket and bring them to light. Uh, you were saying... Oh, oh sorry. I was going to say, that's that's easy. I'll be the mark. They, people underestimate me. They think I'm dumb or something. And then I'll, they'll try and sell me stuff and now I'll kill them good. They've been described as a very large man. Bald. Large, bald. He's probably about 6'5 six, to 6'6. Six, six, and a very yeah. short man. About the size of a halfling, but he's not a halfling. George, man. I would like to catch them in the act of selling the products, the bad products themselves. And God. or see preferably I'd like to see where they're storing so that we can get them plus their products all in the same swoop. Mm. So. Together. Because I would like to get the faulty items and potions off the street. Being, it, nothing dangerous has happened to anybody. Nobody's truly been harmed by them. Anything funny? Uh, people have experienced strange illusions and and such and have found themselves more persuadable in suggest to suggestions made to them. Uh, in a few instances people have stripped naked and wandered through town after <laughs> drinking uh, these healing potions or uh, kind of what, dunks. Uh, I've gone that way just for mail. Uh, Alistair know any, anything about these uh, healing potions? Never encountered Who? them before? Or sorry not Alistair. Um, Thalen. <laughs> Thalen? I'll make a history check. Uh, 16. Strike one. Um, it doesn't really stand out as unusual. Stuff like this happens all the time everywhere. There's always somebody trying to make a dollar off of selling cheap magic items to folk. Especially out here, no one knows any better. I just didn't, I didn't want to know if you knew Even just that. wandering through town, you've only seen that there's one, what looks like one licensed al alchemist and artificer, which is Vanus Alchemy. Um, so there's just not a ton of people who would know any better on the subject matter. Are they, uh, are they selling potions of a specific, is it like just healing stuff? Like what's it, what's it, what are people looking for when they're buying their potions? They've been selling potions to deal with male impotence and female fertility. Oh, well I'm out. I have no problem there. Male impotence. We're already faking, can't you just fake that? Oh no, I can look at me, who would believe it? Me, everybody. The half orc has a point. They breed faster than rabbits. Yeah. yeah. Way faster. We had a competition one time. Well, you could just be actually a female and have female impotence. You just couldn't seem to, well, have a child. With you your, never I don't think I'm supposed to have a child. That's not how it works. Oh. Well. This one looks wimpy. <laughs> you can do it. Easy. Or, you know, he's kind of old. Wimpy's That's actually old. a good idea. I don't like the insinuation. We're just insinuating your gray hair is very fitting. Sometimes <laughs> you need that extra five in your step. I say we deal with the goblins. Yeah. Uh, they're a nuisance, but you know, you just smack them around a little bit, keep them in line. Well, we should. I'm good but a personal favor. It shouldn't. It shouldn't take. It shouldn't take you more than a few hours. Um, they've been seen selling at. At the uh, the Blue Fairy Ale House in the West Blue Quarter. Fairy. <laughs> Blue. Yeah, it could be a. Uh... I would arrest <laughs> them on the spot. You mean like the orc? But I haven't actually seen anybody with them or any items in question, and most of the people don't seem to. They seem to give different accounts of exactly who sold them whatever it is that they were buying. The general report is that they're either large or small, but they've also been described as being a large Goliath, and a gnome. And uh, maybe a tall, slender man. Either way, the proportions are a small and large man. Is the most that we really have to go off of. And the large ones are always bald. Yes. Did you um? Did, was there any key phrases or words used to start the interaction that you're aware of? Um. No. I, nothing like that has come to the light during our, our questioning of some of the people affected by it. All right. Uh, yeah. They're probably Just looking for the happy. sad guy drinking the most because he can't please his woman. What? I do I look sad? 
Uh, yes. Either way, it would give me time to pull in some more of the information and allow the patrols coming in from the uh, the Deep Canyon Pass to um, give us an update on the goblins and the bugbears. As realistically, they haven't been extraordinarily uh, violent, and they haven't there haven't been any fatalities, but they've definitely been using clubs to beat people near unconsciousness and near death and take everything that they can, including picking up the horses and taking them. Wait, wait, wait. This is, this is a personal favor. Does that mean we're not getting paid? Yeah, it would mean that you would not get paid for this. It would be a personal hundred. favor. You'd consider consider myself owing you for dealing uh, with this. As you... outsiders coming in here, I might have to wait who knows how long to find people I might be willing to trust with this. And my own investigations would, would take far longer. And they might have already moved out of town or could move out of town in the next few days, especially if they catch on to the fact that we're aware of what they're what they're doing. Now, before you say anything rash, I think that um, politically speaking, making good relations with the local guard would be ideal. But does this really seem like that big of a deal? You know, uh, if it is to him, then yes. Well, what if what if we do? Come on, I just realized. I'll tell you guys later. It's a secret. Come on. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Fine. It shouldn't take too long. You can still make money later. So, do so you think it's going to be funny when we send Riken in there? No, I already think it's funny. I'll tell you about it later. I look exactly. at the guard. Listen, if you, if you handle this for me, not only will I consider it a personal favor, in which you can ask from me at some time, but I may be able to put in a word to Vana in order to maybe give you a small discount on your first purchase of any alchemical components or potions from her shop. So, so, uh, where is this proof? Can we get a better here? discount on armor instead? I like I, I, I don't think so. Yeah. Had to try. We're, we don't have the resources to spend, and armor is far more difficult to make and time consuming. Absolutely. And we need everything we can reserved for arming the townspeople if we come under attack. Well, where's this blue fairy place? In the west quarter. All right, we have our mission, gentlemen. Let's do it. Okay. We'll see you later with a bald, fat, tall guy in a midget. No, if if you fall, if you find who they are, follow them. I, I need to know where they're keeping the stash of items, or if there's somebody else making them. Oh my it doesn't solve the problem the if person. we catch them, but we don't find out. I I don't know for sure, but if they're not making it themselves. Whoever's making these faulty potions, I need them as well, or they'll just find two other patsies to peddle their bad goods elsewhere. This personal favor is getting more and more difficult. All right, fine. Let's do it. You got a loomy? Fun, fat ball guy and <laughs> midget. Or little, little person. Meow. Yeah, that. Yeah. So let's start heading to the west corner. We'll see you later. <laughs> Our favor. All right, I... Anxiously await seeing if you successfully catch them or not. As we, as Find we, them, follow out where they're going, and then we'll have I'll have my guards take them down. Sounds good. Right. In the meanwhile, if you need anything, I'll send a messenger to Vanas ahead of you if you want to stop by there first. Sounds good. You might not need the supplies now, but it's better earlier and you get there. And she's in the better mood, and when you meet her, you'll know why. If you are going to deal with either of the other problems, it's best that you go equipped and as prepared as you can be. And we have, like I said before, we have no resources to spare you, regardless of whether we're, we're already going to be paying you, so we have nothing else to give. Alright. Well, come on, guys, let's go. I need to get paid. Can I start rushing everyone away? And I wrap my arm around. <laughs> and so he turns and calls over a few of the few of the other guards, his personal guard, and they, they leave back heading towards the guardhouse. And as we walk down the street, I lean in and I say, I figured out what this is a personal favor. What? He got some wiener pills or wiener potions and it didn't work, and that's why it's a personal favor. He's a customer. <laughs> <laughs> that. I know I'm a genius, right? Yeah. So what do you got to do? A genius. You should mention it to him. Then you figured it out. He'll love it. Oh, I'm gonna wait till after we collapse. Right, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's why I didn't see it. <laughs> He'll, yeah. yeah. He'll be very impressed. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and embarrassed. Oh, the look on his face will be priceless. Priceless. Yeah, I don't know. 
The look on my face. I don't <laughs> try to I don't care we're not getting paid. That's just funny shit. <laughs> Fine, I'll do this. Right, Remember, you have to look exceedingly pitiful. Like sad. Like you need to cry. I don't. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I can do a minor. Yeah, look pathetic. For they you. don't need all that. You well, need to look more pathetic than you normally. I mean, more than you ever have. No, I, I, I have an idea. Some people. I have an idea. I am terribly sorry. I rephrased. I have an idea. Yes. We nope. send we send them into the bar, right? Uh-huh. And then we send Lumi in, and she flirts with him. But then he's like, "I'd love to, but I totally can't," and turns her away, and then acts all sad. I'm not doing that. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> Come with the program. You were a military man, right? Would you prefer if Lucian came in and flirted with you or me? I'd love to. I'm quite sure. Now, what if cats just... He might fall through anyway. What if cats just aren't his thing? What's the matter with The fur is amazing. I don't know. I don't see why you wouldn't be. Look, how about I just go in and ask a guy, hey, aren't you the guy that helps with the stuff? And then they hand me a potion (laughs) and I hand them a little gold and then we follow them because it's a drug deal and it's not hard. Haven't you ever bought drugs? Absolutely, but you have to play the part. You have to sell it. It's a performance. No, you know what a drug dealer doesn't like? Performance and shows. He likes to get his gold and leave. He's got a point. Like a really good one. I've never bought drugs, but I imagine he's right. How many times have you been arrested? Um, It's a lot, because you just can't not make a show of everything you do. Absolutely. (laughs) It's it's not my fault. Do you know how you get away with crime, Bard? Lumi chips up from the back. It it does take a certain amount of of tactfulness, and you seem to not have that in any abundance. You would have been my best customer. That's all I'm saying. And he was a god. (laughs) I was. We would have been friends. I would have bought you a drink. I would have been fine. You would have never arrested. You would try to. I'd never get arrested. You would no. try to bribe a god with a drink. In those days, I probably would have just beat you. See, that's rude, aggressive, and it means you. So, can't what are you guys looking at doing? Yeah, you want to go to the Blue Fairy, or do you guys want to go to Vanus first? Oh, I'd like to. I'd like to. Put Let's out. just settle this Blue Fairy. Yeah. Business. Yeah. Let's go right into it. Okay. Well, let's bring Rike right into the Blue Fairy, and then and then Van or whatever her name is will be like super extra happy. Yeah, if it, if it doesn't pan out with you, but I mean, I got confidence in your plan. That sounds good. He's Straight not crying. Forward. I have no confidence. I, I could go in there. They probably don't know how Dragonborn, how we do things. So we go to all this. Interesting stuff. question. How do they do things? Well, this, 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 is, this is a story for another time. You ask the parents. <laughs> <laughs> Dragonborn, oh, Dragonborn, yeah. Dragonborn, do it with the lights on. <laughs> oh. <No. laughs> Red Dragonborn, fine. <laughs> Look me in the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, All right let's, fine. let's go to this blue fairy place. So, as you make your way down the west, the uh, the, the main street to, towards the west quarter, this is one of the the newer quarters of the area, and there's more as, as opposed to the timber and uh, more of the timber and stone buildings. There's more of the Tudor style, like multi-story buildings in this area, and they're kind of congested. Uh, and there's this is also where the Church of Parathor is. You can see the uh, the holy symbol above the building. Uh, it looks all most of the town looks new as a lot huge portion of it has been renovated and revitalized by all the trade and all the hard work that from your understanding the mayor has put into ever since him and his his wife came into taking over the position from they got to know the city in a way that nobody else did during during the fighting in the orc wars serving uh, serving the militia uh, the people more or less regard them as as heroes from the amount of like interactions that you've had just walking through town and talking to people at various times and so as you approach this large uh, two-story building uh, you can see that there is uh, a whole bunch of people outside it looks like it's a really busy establishment there's a bunch of horses tied up out front Uh, there's about three or four um, looks like bouncers of some sort at the front of the door but it's it's a large green building with these uh this blue tiled roof and this large sign that has this uh very petite fairy with these like almost exaggerated like blue wings on the front hanging from the building and as you approach you can hear that it's just super rowdy there's like people shouting and shit getting tossed around you can hear you hear the distinct sound of the table getting slammed um like as you're walking uh 
Thalen steps in what he's only can assume is probably somebody's vomit, and uh, it just seems like the kind of joint that uh, you know is where you would go. If it's shit, it's not on my shoe. Vomit. This is disgusting. Mm -hmm. Can we go in? This, oh, yeah. this would have been exactly where I'd have looked for in my younger days. <sighs> yeah, yeah, but now you need that potion. Uh, uh, uh. I get it. <laughs> I get what we're here for. Yeah. Do any of the bouncers look bald and tall? Or really short? Like a little bouncer? No, they all look like they're average height uh, humans. They're all male. They all have kind of like dark hair. For the most part, most of the people in the region actually do. Are they kind of blocking the door, or they're just there? No, they're just on the outside. They're not blocking the door. They're bullshitting with one another. It, one of them like tosses the other one like uh, a silver piece. You see it just flick. Probably some lost bet. Mm. They don't even really acknowledge you as you walk forward. They kind of give you a quick pan and see who you are and you know, make the most of it. But they don't really give you any kind of a hard time. They don't say anything. All right. Evening, gentlemen. Evening. Anything interesting happening in there tonight? Kind of takes a look in the door. Same shit as normal. Perfect. I walk in. I have a question. Uh, yes, sir. Where's the gambling? The gambling? Well, yes. I mean... Who's the, who's the richest blood in there? Uh, well... I, You're here all the time. You would know. Well, I mean, the owner herself, she normally takes part. Is she, is she most of them. I, I mean, I believe she should be there. I haven't really seen her. I mean, she's, she's easy to keep track of. You'll recognize her. She's got light pink hair. She's known. She gets lost in the crowds. I think I have someone to go speak to. Thank you. And I walk in. Okay. I walk, I walk in and I turn on sub. They all just look at each other. They're not really quite sure how to respond to that. So as you enter, it's uh, it's a hundred percent filled to capacity. There's tons of people standing everywhere. There's uh, there's several different gambling dice games going, some card games, three dragon ante, and then you see some you see some people throwing um, dagger throwing against the board. Uh, you see uh, that there's there is, they have actually a wide space that's cleared out, and there's like this dirt pit in the corner. And they have an oxen on one end with a fucking rope tied to it and people on the other end trying to pull it and see if they can budge this uh, oxen and it just sits there keeps chewing on its its food it's not even yeah. not even bothered there's like there's six people just these six small people just like yanking on this thing and they all kind of give up and whatever and they toss all you see them all go over to the table and toss golden to this this large, like, chest that seems to have accumulated a small amount of gold that's being guarded by, like, three people. And there you see the gnome with pink hair sitting over there having a conversation with the people around her. I would gently like to approach the gnome and the people she's talking to. You gently approach her? Gently. Yeah, you know, what's gentle yeah. about that? <laughs> <laughs> what is, define your... I don't want kind of like to timid describe your a gentle well, I, approach. I would, I would not like to approach, like, our Gallant? friend and be like, no, no, no. I want to be like, oh, it's a pleasure to meet you. And so as you approach one of this, uh, this as you as you approach, um, they see you coming, Gentle. and this large Goliath kind of steps in the way, and what what are you doing? I was just gonna go talk to the gnome, actually. Hi. You're um, huge. Tilly's not taking any visitors. Oh, that's. I, I heard she was known to gamble once or twice, and I was trying to feel lucky. I uh, heard she was one of the so best. He gets ready to say something. And you hear this voice peep from behind him. Oh, what's going on there? Who's who is that? Oh, it's a pleasure to meet you. I take off my hat and give a gentle bow. No. My name is Thalen. And oh, Thalen, come here. Let me let me get a good look at you. Absolutely. No approach. <laughs> so Goliath again steps aside and lets you walk by. Takes his hand off of his long sword. And you see, there's like three other individuals. <clears throat> there's uh, two human guards plus the Goliath, and then there's a a, a rather large and imposing looking uh, half orc with a nasty nasty scar that just runs straight down the side of his head like all the way down it's like cut the hair is cut away and real shaved so then and what are you all about here sir well i'm uh i was wandering around the town trying to escape all the nastiness that's been going outside with the elves and well yeah I it's was, quite bad for business isn't it uh, yes and i was kind of hoping to relieve some stress with some gambling maybe see I, if tomorrow was on my side uh, well um it seems as though there's um, all kinds of different games going on, so I mean, have at it. I was Take your pick. 
I was approaching you, actually, because I heard you were the luckiest individual in the tavern. And you told me mm, I've been known to gamble from time to time, but today's not the day for that. Well, it's too rowdy, too, you know, maybe maybe in a private game some other time. Absolutely. If you're ever interested, feel free to let me know. I'm staying at the Dusty, Dusty Dog. Dog. Oh, the Dusty Dog. Yes. Mark, have you met the man yet? No, I was actually... Oh, he's quite an interesting man. I was definitely trying to talk to him about staying for free with my bardic talents, but he hasn't got, got around yet. Hmm. Trying to work your way and earn some real and board, huh? Oh, absolutely. I've got to use my talents somewhere. I can't well, just... well, I'm all booked up for the time being, or else I might offer you to, uh, to get out there and show what you're capable of doing, but I'm all booked up for the week. Well, feel free to hit me up any time. I'd love to show you what I'm good at. Hmm. Even better when the door's shut. Oh. Oh, spry, aren't you? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, as you can see, you can sit and find... If you can find, if you can even find a seat, it looks like it's mainly standing room only at the time being. Um, join in any of the games and put your gold to the test. Absolutely. If you'd like to, I saw that you came in with a rather large half-orc to come over here and, and participate in Strong as an Ox. It looks like the pot's built up to near 400 gold pieces at this point. It's been going for a week and not even pieces. not even Brutus here, the Goliath, has been able to pull it out of its space. You're a big fellow. You could All you gotta it. do is drag it across that small line in the sand. I wanna go see about that. And then I go walk up to the half work. Yeah, as you guys come inside, it's it's busy. People have been bumping into you. Uh, barmaids, like, been ignoring you. They've just been going. There's really no space. Um, some of the larger tables have an impressive size amount of, like, cards and money that's being exchanged between everybody inside the, uh, the ale house at the moment. Come on, Lucian. Let's get you a drink. Put some chest hair on you. Huh. Anyone at the bar that's kind of, like, out? Out? Like, unconscious? Yeah. No. Not at this time. It's still pretty early in the day. I'm older than you. I, uh, is there a, a small little table anywhere, I think, along that line, even if it's occupied? Um, yeah, there is. Well, yeah. Uh, you see a couple of different spots where you might be able to fit most of the party there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I'm gonna go over, uh, over the table and, uh, I'm gonna lean in. I don't know who's sitting. Who's sitting there? Who's uh, sitting there? Yeah, as I approach the table. Uh, it looks like there's a halfling, uh, two humans. Two men and a uh, what looks like a female moon elf. I'm gonna point to my orc, my orc friend across the bar. Okay, I was gonna go over your orc, or my orc friend, <laughs> my orc friend. <laughs> what, what do you want? What? Uh, here, hold my drink, <laughs> and I give my drink to Lucy. I uh, don't hold it. I put it on the table. Whatever. And I walk over to my my uh, strong, I'll, strong friend. Yeah. I lean into the table and I let my, uh, I let, I let my sulfuric breath mm -hmm. wash over it. And yeah, you get this reaction, they're just like, they look over and they're like, hey, do you mind? Yeah, you're in my seat. Is that so? Yeah. So I, the halfling like kind of stands up and he's looking at it. And oh. You can see, you can see, <laughs> yes, that, you can see that he has, uh, <laughs> you can see that not only is he wearing, uh, what looks like studded leather, but he has a, f a pretty nasty looking, like, bladed uh, short sword as well. Is he a short guy? Oh, yeah, he's oh. a halfling. <laughs> so he's, like, looking up and he steps right up to you. He's like, oh, is that so? And you see the moon elf kind of reach over and she grabs this 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 staff that's kind of leaned against the wall. And she pull, pulls it closer to her. And the other two men also kind of, you see them move their cloaks aside. But yeah. I didn't see your name on it. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know. I came up to a table of killers. <laughs> I guess I should have looked. <laughs> yeah. What's? Yeah. Your your passive perception not so great. He's oh, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, you got nothing to say. You come over here and you you stand over us with your your imposing figure and think you're intimidated out of this. You gonna let him talk to you like that, Oh no! I go behind him and I clasp him on the back. You've had too many, friend. I have none. I go with it. <laughs> make, make, make a performance check with me. <laughs> I'm sure it's super good. Oh shit! Ooh. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, performance. I got plus two. 18. 18. Oh, shit. Uh, roll another one. Yeah. So With advantage. With advantage, you can roll again. Yeah. Oh, another one? Yeah. That'd be yeah, that'd be probably yeah. yeah. So the highest would be 14. The highest is a 14? Yeah. Okay. So, um, so you can see he kind of 
puts his cloak back and they all kind of whatever and, and the moon elf puts her staff back against the wall. He goes, hey, listen, listen to your friend. Don't be coming over here and making enemies right away. He's like, it'd be better off if you came and offered to buy us a drink. Maybe sit down and talk. I'll buy you that drink. And you lay down. Mm. Look at that table of killers. <laughs> <laughs> it is a table of killers. Good. Good. You found them. Tired. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's a bugbear and goblin problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, I'll take, a, I'll take a, a flat ale. Excellent. Well, it looks like they're busy, so you take the, the coin instead for now? Yeah, sure. Great. I'll take that. I flip my whole gold. <laughs> Can't you see? Ah, I see. Gotcha. Your friend is about to get you into some real trouble, I think. So, yeah, well, this ought to buy a few drinks for the whole table then, as opposed to just me. Excellent. So thank you kindly. Maybe it buys a little bit of information too. I've heard that someone around here might have something for a man's vitality. Ah, oh, interested in a little bit of backdoor business, huh? Get <laughs> 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 <Bring> back. <laughs> nope. I may know a few people. I've been in the region for quite a while. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I'll be... What are you looking for in particular? I mean, it does matter, depending on the item that you're looking for. Well, you know, something to help keep a man alive, endure. To keep you thriving. Yeah. I see. As a matter of fact, there is there are a couple of very interesting gentlemen who've been peddling those exact wares lately. Perfect. Hmm? They've been operating out of here. I believe they might be on the second floor. It's hard to miss. He's a great big burly man and a short, stout human. Perfect. Look at the other information. Uh, I think that'll do for now. Yeah, consider it a square considering you overpaid for the drinks. Great. Hmm. So he turns and goes back to having a conversation with his fellows Come on the table. on, Alpha, you've proven you're a man. Let's go. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big dragon. You're a big I'm a real dragon. big tough dragon. I you're a big push people around. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, so you head upstairs. upstairs. What are you guys doing? Uh, I'm approaching the uh, half-orc. I'm mm -hmm. standing there confused at what the fuck just happened. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys just watched this whole exchange. Yeah, I <laughs> I, listen, I didn't get us a table. I was letting him lead us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You, you feel a tap on your back. I feel like you look over. What? <laughs> so, so Luthok, I have, I have a couple questions for you if, you, if you're willing. One, uh, are you the strongest man in this room? I look around. I assume I see that glide. I don't see that have work. Oh no, probably. <laughs> Very close. Do you like gold? Oh, duh. Would you want to participate in a, strong, in a strongman competition? No. Don't you want 400 gold? Yes. I'll pay your entry fee if it's not outrageous, and you win the gold and I take a portion well, of the pot. A, is there a strong work competition? Cause... Well, no, I'm just hoping you're the strongest, badass, most daring individual in the room that can well, pull an ox. It, it feels unfair competing with a man competition. You know, so why, not, why not prove that you're so much stronger than they are? Show them that through your rage alone, you can drag an ox. Whatever, fine. I'll, I'll show them how, how real work does it. Awesome, follow me. And I head over to the oxen. Are you stronger than an ox competition? Yeah, so you come back over. So he's like, oh, did you convince your friend, huh? Absolutely. How much is the entry? Yep, it's two gold a person. Well, here's four, because I'm going to try anyway. Ah, oh, just the two of you. I saw that you had a very large dragonborn with you, too. Um, he's currently drunk and getting drug away for starting a bar fight. Almost starting a bar fight. So. I am kind of pulling him upstairs with me. Okay. Oh my sure. God, I should always oh, well, that's right. too bad. Yeah, you I think are you sure you'd even like to, to contribute? Because I have to tell you, I think the half-orc stands a better chance without you even helping. What do you feel? Do you want me to just tug on the end and make it feel better? Oh, uh, it helps help. I'm not an elf, I'm a half-elf. I'm half potato, as good. Potato. We've been over this. Absolutely, but wouldn't you rather have a potato? No, I hopped down and I walked over to this rope thing. Yeah, you walk over there? Yeah, so you toss, you, You're going with him? 
Yeah, I right. toss him forward. Yeah, I toss him forward. So, as you as you approach, you see that there's this long rope, and it's been tied to the uh, it's been tied to the midsection of the oxen, as opposed to like the neck area, and uh, just kind of kicking around the dirt. It's soft, so this this thing is this thing is like dug in there, and you think it might be done purposely <laughs> to make it more difficult. So not only are you fighting this oxen, but you're going to be pulling them against the sand as well. So, <clears throat> the game works in three stages. So you're going to make three separate strength checks, the both of you. You take the higher of whoever's strength check applied to the first one. So you get three you get three pull attempts, and each one subsequently gets more difficult. So the first check is a DC 10 strength check. <coughs> so people start gathering up, and like they're all watching and like drinking, and you hear some people like cheer and a couple of other jeers or whatever. Nobody wants... To see somebody else go home with that four hundred dollar gold pot. Well, four oh four now. So let's get you guys a strength checks. Oh fuck. And as he's down there I lean in. It's four hundred gold help let me help. So realistically, it you're technically rolling with advantage because there's the two of you. Yep. But we're gonna give whoever's roll is higher versus just having him roll with advantage. Yep. Alright. So make the first check, DC ten. Huh? Not bad. Strength check? Yep. Twenty. Uh, oh, oh yeah, twelve. Well, <laughs> athletics, right? Yeah, it'd be oh, athletics. athletics? Yeah. Oh yeah, it'd be athletics. Oh, thirteen. <laughs> so you get it, pull up that rope, and you wrap it around, and you get that first yank, and it just slides forward a little bit, and everybody in the crowd just like starts staring. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, the next check, DC eighteen, athletics. <gasps> Motherfucker, I pulled a pool. Oh, I got you. And 11. So got an 11. B14. And then. Yeah. Alright, so. Since, since this you... time you go. Get it in there again. Nice, strong pull. And suddenly you feel a set of legs accidentally kick you as Thalen loses his, his posture in the sand and, like, just straight kicks you, throwing you off. Yeah, so you feel his sharp boots just nail you in the back. So you have two more. You have two more. You have two more pull attempts to use. Are you uh, are you feeling a little angry that I that I kicked mm -hmm. you in the back? Feeling like rage. People start going, "Oh, come on! You already moved it once." Everybody starts yelling at you and like kind of jeering you. Elf is making me look like a fucking chump, and I rage. <laughs> I pull recklessly and I rage. All right, so. <laughs> Roll with advantage, and so we'll use three of you guys. Mm -hmm. oh, oh. Seventeen. Seventeen. Are you adding your modifier? Yeah. I got nice. four plus five. I got a, two. I got it. I have eight. <laughs> Son of a bitch. So once again, the both you you heave as hard as you can. You pull it and it starts it starts slipping forward, but then it just kind of like turns a little bit and just pulls you forward instead. <laughs> oh, I'm so mad. Um. <laughs> so everybody starts laughing at you guys. They're all loud. You, you even guys even hear the sound of some shit like hitting the wall on the other side of you as people are throwing things at you. Right, so you have so, one more attempt to get through the next two checks. So. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a, uh, I, I yell out, <laughs> IS MAGIC PROHIBITED?! Hmm? I, I, I yell out if magic is prohibited. Nah, no spells! Damn it! You hear from Tilly from the corner. Oh. Fuck. So... I grip in and I, I pull harder! How many rages are you doing to commit? Well, you're currently still raging. Yeah, you're still raging. Am I still raging? Yeah, you have yeah. six seconds! Oh, I'm so mad! <laughs> I'm so angry. Yeah. Oh. Ah. Motherfucker. Dude. 13. 18. 18. Fuck. 17. Ah. Can, I, can I use acrobatics somehow by like pushing off his back and giving as hard of like a backward jump pull as I can? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, you use him for leverage and you 20. Will. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so you like, you're like, oh, whatever. You just. <laughs> Like, start pulling over, you like run and jump off of him and like yank as hard as you can. And it just, the once again, the oxen just slides forward, the edge of its hooves just barely, barely right next to the land sand line. So now we need a DC 20. This one for all the fucking marbles. Go on, oh, go on, go on, go on, go on. Fucking marbles. 
Oh, yeah. 23. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. yes. You fucking, you lean into this, you wrap your fucking hands around it, and you yank, and this fucking oxen just, boom, stumbles in the ground, hitting the dirt, knocking it up, and everybody just fucking quiet. <laughs> yeah, you shit! <laughs> Just quiet, oxen just, just laying there on the ground, you know. So, so everybody then just the crowd erupts. Everybody fucking cheers. There's applause, you know. People start offering to buy you guys buy you drinks, and you know a few people. Some of the larger guys who've been embarrassed early, you can see them over there, like you know, like rubbing their arms and stuff, and they're just like, ah, whatever, you know, like. You know, we moved. We already moved it. You know, a little bit, just claiming blah 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 and bullshit. I walk up to his arm like, and hold it up more. Strongest badass in the room. Yeah, real you think power. You can win an arm wrestling match. Talk to me. I bet you he wins. What the? Well, yeah, I win. But what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, so there's just another round of cheers and applause. Yeah, people are. I want to you know, people over. are uh, like, super excited, and, and you start approaching. Tillyson jumps down off from her table, and she closes it up, and she's like, "Well, here you go. Looks like we got started again." She's like, "I guess I'll add my own gold to the next one," and she gives you the chest, and it's just this small little chest just filled with gold. So you have you you guys entered his entrance, so you have split, so you each get two o two. I reach in and only pull a hundred and two out. You you passed twice. I, I I only helped a little bit. Only when I kicked off your backs. So you deserve more than that. Do you watch as the big old Goliath Brutus walks over there and kind of picks up the oxen by its like front end, its horns, and just props it up and reties it on there and walks it back over to the edge. Oh, he can prop it up, but he couldn't drag it. Mm -hmm. Weak. The oxen help. Yeah. Uh, so we're halfway. Up well, nobody ever, nobody shirts. nobody said that he hadn't played before, so you never know. That's true. Uh, I want to walk over to the oxen real quick. Don't worry. You showed all these other motherfuckers they're a bunch of pussies. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go back. It just looks Stop. at you, has no idea what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> just keep <laughs> chewing. Just you know, chewing. Stay with that couch, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Just, no. <laughs> that fucking, that side, that side jump? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd go, I'd go outside for a quick leak. <laughs> well, my friends saved the day. Yes. Alright, so as uh, you guys come up, what are you doing? Before you go up, yeah. and you guys are walking off, I just cast message on you. Where are you guys going? Because everyone's drugs. just fucking gone now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to wave from that table and fucking kill us. <laughs> kill us. <laughs> Don't act like how a nasty razor weapon. What the fuck? Yeah. That's going to be your new shirt. Yeah. Table of killers. I looked. I'm drunk. I should have looked. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's a table of killers. <laughs> Right. Sounds made up. Sounds, Sounds made up. Yes, it is. Oh, God. It's so fantastic. what are you doing? You just cast message, that's it? What do you tell them? Just asking where, they, where they're going. I'm going to go buy drugs. Nice. <laughs> oh, good evening. I just follow. <laughs> yeah, so you I've follow never bought drugs. drugs. Kind of catches up, quick jot. We're about you, almost fucking, you almost trip over this fucking gnome who's wandering by or whatever. You just, oh, what? Well, you know, and you go follow him up the stairs. So I've got my hand, like, on, on his shoulder and on his back, you know, just like, yes, you're a big <laughs> dragon. I'm like, oh yeah, I have a big dragon. Yeah, all right. All big dragon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you get up there, and for the most part, uh, the, the landing up above is is just as filled. There's a bunch of people, but you very distinctly can make out the two characters that were described in the far corner, and it looks like they're uh, like they're counting out coins and kind of separating them into little piles. You see silver and copper and some gold, and they're kind of arguing. It looks like they might be having some sort of a disagreement. And the big guy just kind of like reaches over and he like grabs the little guy and they're like yelling at each other or whatever. But then he just like lets him go. And so as you approach, as I'm walking over, are there any tables? Like, open? Yeah. Well, no. not open, but with people sitting at them drinking. Yeah. Okay. Everybody seems to be minding their own business though. Okay. So it's I, loud. Everybody's having yeah, a great time. As I'm walking over there, I just put a gold coin on. Or no, yeah, I'm. I need two. So. I put ten silver coins on the table mm -hmm. and grab, just grab two of the fullest drinks at the table from in front of someone. Uh huh. I'm gonna need these. Yeah, they don't. They're just like, all right, <laughs> great. <laughs> the gold, all right. And I walk over to the two, and then I just put the drinks in front of them at their table. So they see you come up and he kind of turns, and the little man with this uh. 
like slick back brown hair and he's got this uh, nice set of uh, traveling tunics and the other guy's got this kind of raggedy looking like overcoat and shirt and you know they kind of look at you and the little man goes oh look Borg it looks like we got we got a couple of customers you know what can what can I do for you who sent you here who are you uh, just a man looking for help ah help gotcha are you yeah. looking to bed one of the, the ladies in here tonight, or or you got you got problems at home? Uh, problems at home. Problems at home. <laughs> that's, too, that's too bad. That's too bad. It ain't that too bad, Borg? And he like elbows him, dude, and and it just like shoves, and you hear him just yeah, kind of mumble around it's or whatever. It's like, well, I got exactly what you need. Great. So let's discuss price then. How much of a problem do you have at home? <laughs> uh, well, I see how this is going. Mm -hmm. Look, this is the quality stuff. It'll really get you going. Not only that, but it lasts for hours. Lasts for hours? Yeah. Some say that's unhealthy. <sighs> Those people are wrong. Excellent. Well, seems like it might be a five gold problem. Ah, five gold to work. That's a good one for you. For maybe a few. Hmm. You drive a hard bargain with five gold it is. We'll give you three doses. And don't take them too close to one another. You got it. Don't overdo it. Excellent. You have different problems at home. <laughs> Keep it together. <laughs> hey, Borden. Go ahead and get the, uh, get the, uh, get the stuff for him, will ya? So he kind of turns around, walks over to this, uh, it looks like a drinking barrel of drinking water, but he like twists it and comes up and it's just like a false top with water on it. And then he reaches in and pulls out three vials, puts it down, the water kind of splashes over the side, brings it back, one, two, three, right on the table. It's like, now for your end of the deal, five gold. So I reach in, just drop it on the table. All right, so he kind of kicks it, takes it. Yeah, it looks, looks real. You never know what you're getting from some of these country folk at times. He takes it and puts it in this coin purse or whatever. Well, anything else that I can do for you? Not tonight. Yeah. Well, I hate to I hate to just do business and run, but it, it's probably best that I relocate after this point. Right. I understand. Don't want to get too comfortable selling in the exact same spot at the same times all the time. If you know what I mean. I know. Hey, come on, Borg. And he kind of like fucking elbows him again. The big old dude just turns and starts following him. They go down the stairs. As you're coming up the stairs, Lucian, you like, <clears throat> you see them coming towards you as you're like catching up. They come around the ways and kind of just look at you. And uh, you see, you see something kind of interesting. Like there's a, like there's a, a like a change in his appearance for a small amount of time and you feel like you see somebody you're not sure it's so quick but you're like that's one that's one hairy man as they walk by which one borg the tall one borg borg mm -hmm. and they kind of walk downstairs when you're done counting gold and so on you guys kind of see him walk by or whatever was he hairy when you saw him? No. He was disgusting. It's an illusion. Mm. Why are you trying to be following? He didn't know. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Well, I follow him. Just you? Is everybody following? I'm following, I'm following too. Mm. Well, I'll follow. Well, you guys behind, are way behind you. So I, I thought to sit out. Yeah, I don't think you guys know. So. Mm. Well, we saw him leaving. We were counting gold. You don't know who they are, though. I don't know. Do they appear to be matching the description of one giant man on short man? Well, yeah, that's why I pointed them out to you. Yeah. Uh, they're they're obvious. The proportions and size, the baldness, it matches what you were looking for. Oh, absolutely. I'll blend mm -hmm. in and blend in with the crowd and follow along. All right. So as you guys all follow him <coughs> down the street, stealthily. stealth. Well, then make stealth checks, please. Stealthily. Oh, 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 I'm I'm the most. I'm, I'm stealth. You're, you're I'm proficient in stealth. I'm, I got, I got, I got three. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, That's all we got. 
<laughs> Neat. Neato. Neat. Neat. <laughs> I would have been better off not sitting the damn thing. Well, I can't find it, but I got seven. Three, seven. We're drunk. <laughs> Three, eight. eight. Oh, man, you guys are some stealthy fucks. <laughs> well, not Lumi. What uh, is that? Yeah. So, is as it, you guys are leaving, you fucking. fucking you manage to grab her by her fucking scarf and, like, pull her away as she's, like, fucking. Looks like she's just. Like cleaning up fucking table at fucking three dragon ante or whatever. So um, add uh, add fucking fifty gold pieces to Amanda's character sheet if you can. If you would be so kind. If you'd be so kind to annotate. Three stooges. But, so you watch him, someone. and you guys keep you keep a fair distance. There are a couple times as you watch them kind of go through the crowd, move through the street. Um, they kind of stop at a couple of market stalls, grab some like a couple of apples or whatever, and they're eating them. And they they're sort of just hanging out, talking to people or whatever. And you and you watch. You watch as the the little the little man, <clears throat> Finley kind of he pickpockets a few people here and there. You'll see him just like very quickly just grab a coin purse here, you know some some parchments I out of this person's <laughs> pockets here, you know. And eventually they kind of make their way to towards the outskirts of town. And you watch Finley like take an immediate right and Borg kind of keeps walking. And then he comes back and like grabs him by the hand and like yanks him back behind the side of the building. And as you guys come around the corner. You can you can hear two people talking, but you can't see them because they've gone around the backside. And you can hear them talking about like, oh man, we got we got we got some gold in today, and you know, but you you gotta you gotta you gotta talk or something. People are catching on. Like you just you know you can't just stand there and be an idiot all the time, or you gotta actually interact with people with your dumb face. You know, so they're just like, he's just harping on whatever you guys can hear, like gold being counted and the clinking of some other items. And you look, you look around the corner and, and they're just, they're sitting back there and they have this, like this small, like barrel, closed off barrel. And they're both just kind of like splitting up the five gold and well, counting on, their on take the on the day. Yeah. And the, emptying the coin purses that you watch them lift and kind of sorting through the various parchments that they lifted off other people. Check my gold purse again. <laughs> so you guys done? She doesn't have a gold spot. Just write on the app. Just slide it in. 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 Slide it we know what you're doing. The surrender? No, we're not. We're not supposed to confront them. 50, we're we supposed to find them where, until we find where they're making the stuff. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. Don't we just stand around and wait now? Lumi, you like watching and following people, right? So she's just kind of like looking around. She comes back. Hey, she's hey. like, oh, oh, yeah. You like well, watching I, and following, yeah? Well, like is a strong word, but I can. Great. I'd rather go back and gamble some more, but you know, whatever. You were doing pretty good. I was doing good. That, yeah. Those people were suckers. <laughs> they are. Yeah. Uh, anyway, you want to follow these guys? Uh, sh I mean, sure. How long do you think I should follow them? I don't know. Probably the whole night. <laughs> Right. Until, You're asking a lot. Yeah. Until they fall. I'm a finder they, of things, though, so this does appeal to me. They. It, I'm, I want you to find where they live and then give that to me. I'll even pay you. What's your standard rate for that sort of thing? Hmm. It really just depends on the length of the finding. I normally come back later. One night. One night. Hmm. I get any blinkies. They're yours. I. That's great. All right, so I get Blinkies. Um, I'm going to go with 10 gold for the night. Perfect. Um, Lumi, just so you know, the Blinkies might be drugs. <coughs> so don't Drugs are them. worth money. Just don't drink them. <laughs> Speaking of. Yeah, um, speaking of but as you guys are having this conversation, you see Finley, like, stop. And he turns, and he pulls him down board to him, and he starts, like, whispering in his ear. And they start, like, very obviously, like, turning away, and they start, like, pocketing the gold, and they start walking away from you guys. <laughs> go! 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 They're running! Go! go! So as they're around the corner of the building, they just fucking take off. Oh, we're all real broke. 
Do, do we run no. or do we let the cat run? run. Or do we all run? I'm are we running? running? Are we yeah, not running? running? Well, I haven't been We're made. running. Are we running or are we not? I haven't been made yet. We can do this in another few days if, not, if we don't catch him tonight. Uh, uh, okay, no. am I? No. Is the cat running? The cat should probably chase him down since I paid her. Luke, oh, yeah. run! Yeah, so she just run! She takes off, Was it cat fucking winks running? the corner, and then you just hear thud. And fucking people hit the ground, and you guys, then you hear the distinct uh, voice of fucking Finley, and he's like yelling at fucking Borg or whatever. And he's like, You, you fucking goddamn big oaf. He's like, You're not supposed to get in the way when we start running and trip me and stuff. Now look, now we're fine. Go away. <laughs> all right. Well, but, that's not what I wanted at all. So as you come around the corner, <clears throat> you'd see that um, whatever, whatever illusionary magic they had been using, has worn off, and instead on the ground in front of you, you see laying on its on its rear side against the wall is a large bugbear, and on the ground is this little like little green goblin with this like nick out of its one of its ears has been like chopped or lopped off, and he kind of just looks up and he's just like, "Hi," I, I wave back. Hi. And the bugbear just looks at you, he's like, "Ah, uh, uh, how are you? <laughs> Two problems at once." Yeah, how's your night going? It's like, well, um, it was going pretty good. Now it's not so good. Are you serious? We're fucking chasing. Lumi's just like near them, like <laughs> over them, just staring. She's like, I know I was supposed to follow him, but I didn't expect to run right into the back of the bugbear while he was standing okay. there. Okay, yeah, that's fair. You, you, you guys seem like two applicable fellows. They seem like a bugbear and a goblin. Well, the goblin is talking and seems quite nice. I want to, mm. I want to see if he's, if he's complacent. I think you know how this is gonna. Please, 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 please let me handle this for a little bit, and I can, t then I can just tell you what this thing. Did, did that work, Keith? Please. No, I wasn't gonna. You can't let know who's boss. I'm pretty sure they know. I, I'm gonna make a long story short. We're trying to find the people who make the stuff that you're selling. He looks over. At Riken, and he's like, "Son of a bitch." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want my gold back too. Since we are threatening, <laughs> oh, he pulls out his coin purse, and he's like, "Fine." He takes out the five gold pieces and throws them over at you. Thanks. If you tell us where the whoever's making this is at, I will give you some gold, and you can leave the town peacefully, and no one dies or murdered. Or well, it's not murder. You guys are creatures. It's technically not murder. These not dark books, but still, I'm just trying to. Everyone makes a way happy. Okay, just because we're creatures doesn't mean it's not murder. Don't be. Okay? I'm being rude, and I apologize. I have a tendency of such things. He does. He's like, listen, listen. Yes. Carefully. Do you do you see me? Do you see the ears? The ears okay. are listening. So, I know how this looks. What's happening? But you you don't really owe us anything. But we really like a personal favor that you might not, you don't have to not turn us in. But don't tell people what we are. We're not necessarily welcome here in the area. A, for just being what we are, but B, the people that we fled would love to chop off our heads and portray them to the rest of the clan. And I'm not about that. I'm about making money. But most importantly, I'm about making friends. And he just has this big grin. You see his sharp little, like, broken goblin teeth or whatever. And he's like, in exchange for that, for your discretion, I'm not telling people what we are. Not only will we leave the area immediately, and stop selling this here. I will tell you who's supplying us and where it's coming from. Just kill him, fucking goblins. No, 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 no. And he, and he looks at the half orc, <laughs> and the Borg's just kind of like Ugh, following the conversation, like back and forth. Like, no, 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 no. Look, look, listen, everybody. Okay. I, I'm a valuable asset. I have connections in other places. I can not. I, I can help you because I can tell you right now that this isn't coming from local, and it's not necessarily my choice to do what I'm doing. 
But I owe big people big monies in other places. And as a part of paying that off, this is what they ask us to do is sell this stuff for the pure profit. Everything that I make, my cut goes straight to paying off my debts. I actually don't make any money doing this. How big is your debt? Sizable. You're very small. How sizable are we talking? Bigger than you? Bigger than him? Bigger than lot? Big? What? Sizable. Okay. Sizable. So, you let us slip through, we escape, or you turn us in. If you're, if you turn us in, you allow us to maintain the illusion that we are people and not a goblin and a fucking bugbear. Well, because I'll tell you right now, even if you turn us in, I won't be there for very long. We will be getting out. But not if they know what we are, because they'll execute us. I can be of help and assistance. I know things that are going on, but not more importantly than that, I know where the other goblins are. All, all great points, and I want all of it. We should let him go. I cast Do message you. on Riken. Uh, you have to say it out loud. I'm are we, standing right here. Are we going to... <laughs> no. Oh, I cast... <laughs> it's a whisper that only yeah. you can hear. All right. Yeah. Do, do we kill him? No. He looks nice. So, she you seem cool. very cheerful and applicable. Luthok, yeah. I, feel, I feel like you and Alphras are the ones that might be having a problem. Yes? Yes, Lily? Me too. Okay. Later. Uh, you two, I think, might be the ones that might have a problem with letting these two leave. Oh, uh, I don't fucking care. Okay, cool. Go- He's good. Goblins are little fucking assholes. You just don't trust them. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you're one to speak. Yeah, I have one to speak. Motherfucker? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen here. You need to know your role, Goblin. Listen here. Remember who you're Listen talking here. to. Uh, I'm talking to an asshole, apparently. Okay? Like his people aren't any better, okay? It's not like it's it's not like it, Oh, we're better. Well, his we're opinion better No, his, no, his opinion no, okay? <laughs> right. Look, more our, the tribe wrong. that that I was kicked out of, let's put it lightly. Um, used to be underneath the control of his his very kind of people. Now, when his people got their asses handed to them during the Orc Wars, to put it lightly, we were left oh, stranded and and had to make our own way. Hold me back! Hold me back, my Paris! Oh, okay. I have... Listen, okay? Context. I, I have the information. Not only do I know where the tribe is that's been causing problems, okay? But I can give you the name of the people and Thieves Guild responsible for the wares that we're selling and where it's coming from. And that information has to at least be worth the discretion and the amount of time necessary for us to make our own escape or for you to just let us go. And we move on to a different town. All right. And I make new contacts and I'll, try to work out the debt. back if you scratch ours. You well, say, you scratch you my say, back? Yes. You say, <laughs> you say you, can get out of, you can get out of the, the jail. No problem. Done it before. Great. We're going to turn you in because we get kudos with the town guard. And we'll keep your secret. Yes? I am very applicable. We complete our job. And a very nice, upstanding green gentleman seems to have a good, better day. Mm-hmm. But and his we'll, take, we'll take that location now. And I, uh, Which one? I flip, over, I flip open a book and I hand him over with a quilt. Can, can you write down all the information that, that you promised? Yeah. So he's like... Okay, I'll draw you a map, and then I'll tell you tell you where who's responsible and where the supplies are coming from and, and where we pick them up. But before you okay. do that, Lumi, you're very good at knowing where people are. Is there anyone around that might be listening or watching? Let's find out. <laughs> I get to roll a dice. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Mm-hmm. Right, Just in the nick of time. Bloody dice. Sorry, bloody dice. Come on. Check. No, don't touch my dice. Oh, I'm not touching your. I'm touching mine. Ooh, a natural. Uh, not a natural, <laughs> but a modified twenty. A modified twenty. Yeah. Look at her using the the big nerdy terms. Uh, modified. 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 Are you sure it's just your character modified. that steals two of my dice? 
I know, right? Um, she found me. Basically, found you're in this very narrow alley at the very edge of town, and there's not much activity going on, and it seems like it's kind of a condemned home house or building of some sort. Maybe it was a storage warehouse um, for people or halfway stop, maybe a guard shack. You're not sure without going and looking, but there's definitely nobody like around the general vicinity. Looks like Royal Gucci. <laughs> That's a I term I heard. I don't, I don't, I don't know what she it's said, good. but I'm just going to assume it means good. <laughs> um, yes, so now you may speak and talk and write. Okay, so he gets it, he takes it, and you can see him, like, draw this plan or whatever. Uh, so he draws up this detailed, like, plan of, like, not only does he give you the location and, and how they get there, and how the goblins and bugbears have been going back and forth in the Deep Canyon Pass, but he also draws you a detailed internal schematic of, like, the barricades and the camp itself. Wow. And then he tells you how many are there. And you're looking at, he says, he, you're looking at about, about three bugbears with Ooh. about eight goblins or so. Um, and so... The map shows that basically what they've been doing is that there's this big boulder that they've been moving out of the way and putting back that goes into this cave. And the cave goes all the way back and up through this canyon to this like little little ravine where there's like a big like a small pond in Deep Canyon Pass. Did he draw good? And then he tells you that his suppliers he goes uh, about once every two days, and he picks them up uh, from Warren when they come in there. And that there's a group of individuals there working for a thieves' guild in Anvil. That's where it comes from. And he doesn't know what the name of the thieves' guild is, because it's need to know. But he says that the man that you're looking for uh, is Lance. Yes. Well, you have more than fulfilled on your on your part. The question is, do we bring them in now, or do we we let the guards know to find them? Oh no, no, we'll just bring them in now. Unless you want to, I mean, you've been helpful so far. So, anything you need, but you want to stash that gold? Um, yeah, sure. Yeah, here, let, let me hide it real quick. So he takes it, and uh, before he walks away, I pull out and I go, and here's some for your trouble, and I toss him kind of gold because that was some very detailed notes. Can I swat at it? I can't be mm. mad at someone who gave great notes, and if we run to him again, he's more likely to We're letting him keep all of his gold. We literally could have extorted him out of everything. That seems like could pay enough. I, this is my gold, though. I'm offering that you to You do what you want, your gold. Exactly. Do you want me to take his gold? There's no, freaking elf was talking about settling, settling the goblin's debt. I can... Anyway. <laughs> I'll wait for him to stash the money. He says, oh, well, well, thank you kindly. And he, like, flicks it, catches him, puts the coins in his purse, and then before you know it, boom, smoke bomb fucking goes off. Uh, Fuck! Like little bitch. Ah. <laughs> you fool! You <laughs> should let me kill him! So as you guys you stop coughing purse. and looking at and your eyes start to water, I grab my coin purse. so everybody make a constitution, uh, general constitution. Yeah! Oh, he's, 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 Shit! The, is the Constitution save? Yeah. <laughs> oh, what a bad roll. Constitution save? Or yeah, yeah, save. 15. 15? 19. Young. Yeah. 4. 12. Mm -hmm. 10. So anybody who got who got a 15 or higher, you run out, like, coughing, and your eyes clearing full, you know, as you're pull, trying to get the water out of them, just in time to see, like, the very tail end of this little fucking goblin like dashing all the way through this alley on the other side of the street. Um, is he a, uh, quick question. Who, who all made it is out? He, uh, I did. Is he, uh, is he within 60 feet of me, barely? No. Did, did you make it out? But, yeah, I, I see it. Okay. Oh. I just want to know who's like, who, when we come out, yeah, who's... Yeah. Yeah. Who made I'm it rolling, out? I'm rolling right? on the floor, wiping my yeah. eyes yeah. with Us the palms, because I okay. freaking failed. Like a that was unpleasant. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I charge a fireball, and I look over at the bard for confirmation. <laughs> uh, I don't. Look, I run after him. I, I dash after this little fucker. I'm rolling around. I yeah, so you guys watch the half heart just start rushing through. I'm you know, fucking <laughs> wiping the water out of his eyes, 
He fucking like knocks this fucking elderly person out of the way and just like, rushing through the street. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking charging through the alley. And you, you cross the street, you hit the fucking side of the building, and you look both ways. It looks like dead ends. Stand there and I close my eyes. I burn this goblin's face in my memory. <laughs> I can help the elderly person that's now on the ground in pain. Yeah, so you help her up. She's like, oh my. God, what was that? Goddamn goblin, son of a bitch! <laughs> Can we hear this? I, just start <laughs> going off. I don't know what that was, but I don't mean it along with it. It was, a, it was a freak of nature. And I think he hit you. Yeah. He was blue, so I don't know what it was. <clears throat> yeah, so you guys are standing there. A couple of, a couple of militia guard come over. There's like three of them. And they're like, what's going on over here? What happened? There's a commotion down here. They kind of get like a whiff of the smoke. They're standing on the other side of the street, and they're like, "Oh my, what was that?" My eyes, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my nose, Star- and my eyes. The, Star- the dragon boy fought it. <laughs> He's like, "Oh my, it, it's very sulfury." Ugh. Oh, that's terrible. It's not in my night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Say like, well. They don't seem too too necessarily concerned, and as you helped up the lady, you know, she starts walking away, and she thanks you, and they just kind of, like, well, I mean, it, this is strange, but, I mean, you all, you kind of match the descriptions of the individuals we've been told are looking out for us, so we're gonna, we're just gonna kind of let this one go, and they just mind their own business, and they go back down the street towards the crowds. Bye. Did the bugbear go too? Have a nice oh, day. Oh yeah, they're gone. <laughs> if he did, he's dead. <laughs> yeah, I stand there. I burn the memory of the bugbear's face. <laughs> but they can change their face. Yeah, all right, yeah, I don't know what you're. <laughs> hey, I'm an intelligent so, mate. All right. But yeah. So <laughs> as you guys, you're standing there, and you kind of like, or like clearing your stuff, and you oh, you're a like you check, like Mike, you know Best this. Stuff. A, your coin purse is gone. And has been replaced with this, this note, and it just says, "Yours truly, Finley and Borg. See you again sometime." Finley and Borg. <laughs> I'm so glad I grabbed my coin first. My God, I wish I, it would have been a shame to lose all this. Beer. Listen, listen, you guys' passive perception is not great. Okay, I told you earlier. There's a reason I was laughing so hard, taking writing down stats. <laughs> You're broke. I ran into a table of killers. I just have I, I I have a lot of gold on me. I don't know if it's all in my coin purse or not. I'm assuming it's not because it would over encumber me if it was. It's not that much gold. No. Yeah, not much gold. Gold. you would need a couple thousand to do that. And if you have that, you you're I can cheating. Carry. <laughs> I can bring really yeah, so it. Yeah, so do I. I can bench a stick. The stuff he starts with. Either way, how, what's your gold total? Well, this is how we'll solve this. What's your gold total? Plus your earnings. Uh, two hundred sixty-four gold total. 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 So two hundred, uh, three hundred sixty-four because I have an extra. So three hundred sixty-four. I haven't added that extra hundred in. So we're gonna say he swiped you two hundred. The extra hundred you keep in a separate pouch on the inside of your trouser legs. So he took all my gold except that hundred I just won. Yep. Sounds good. You got one hundred sixty. Fuck. And then. With that, that's where we'll wait till next Friday. Oh, oh, oh. No! Oh. I just came in. I, I, it's 11.32. Uh, one, one tarnation. One tarnation. Yeah. One tarnation. One tarnation. One tarnation. One tarnation. One tarnation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have to be up at five. Yeah. Five. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that was entertaining. You guys are funny yeah. as always. Yeah. 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 That was fun. Thank you, everybody who watched and who's checking us out. You know, hit us with a, a follow if you enjoyed the content. We're going to be here every Friday. Um, the stream, the channel goes live at, at 7 p.m. The game normally runs 7.30 to 11.30 p.m. And we're just happy to have you here to experience this with us. And we look forward to entertaining you with our exceptional shenanigans on a Friday to Friday basis I'll every week. I'll be here the whole time next week. Yeah she, had, un, yeah, she unfortunately had to work, but the tabaxi will be back to control herself. Although I think I did a pretty good job controlling the tabaxi. Oh, yeah! yeah. 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 yeah.
Come back, Z. Oh, okay. Okay. A couple oh, things before you fully go. go away. Yeah. One, thank you, Bro Nesto, for your purchase of the scroll. We do appreciate it. Okay. Sorry that the alert wasn't up and it wasn't functioning. We appreciate you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank New you. And uh, hi, Philip. Love you. Hi, Philip. Um, yeah. And uh, uh, two, you have a person who's requesting that Luthok sign her tits. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The 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 halfling. No. No, 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 no. Wait, what? No, 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 no. I read the Please. chat. Please. Hi, chat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm we, are, we, are, yeah, we are aware Besides. of you. It's like, what? It's like, and it was fun what? hanging out with you, bro, uh, bro Nesto. Thanks again. We appreciate it. Hope to see you again next Friday. Thanks, chair guy. Thanks, chair guy. Chair guy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, importantly, thanks for hanging out through all the technical issues. It's a learning curve for us. We will get everything like on track. Yeah. Uh, eventually, here in the near yeah. future, we hopefully hope, this we, next Friday. Hopefully this next Friday, everything is perfectly solved. We don't have these. Growing. We're continually growing, mm-hmm. um, you know, Absolutely. and we welcome any kind of uh, any kind of suggestions for like the item store and stuff. We're gonna get the widget fixed so that the, um, the so that the notifications pop up. Uh, so we, I know, we still have Stratton guards. Uh, he'll, he'll potion the pill giant strength to give out. Um, right. So I'm thank gonna get Stratton that. Guard. Yeah. Thank yeah, you for thank you. purchasing that. You're. You know, we're trying to get everything set up, and we're keeping track of you. Um, you know, thank you once again for uh, the Bearded Family, for Jack Citus, everybody having us. You know, we're really excited to be a part of this, and we're really excited to put D and D on on Mixer, Mixer and uh, we hope people enjoy it. So, you know, tell your friends to come check us out if you can, if they have Mixer accounts. You know, uh, all's good as far as we're concerned, and we, and we would really, uh, really appreciate a follow. Uh, yeah, just help us out. Yeah, want to get notified when we're online Nine. and see we're live. Follow same bat time, same bat channel kind of thing. Uh, and we do know that there are certain things that people are asking for general questions. We plan on putting in an FAQ for handling some of the really simple questions. Like yes, we're playing uh, in fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons rule set system. Yes, the setting is homebrewed. It's not modules. Uh, everything has been basically created and put together by me in the world, plus with the assistance of the party members over time. Uh, together, we've all put a lot of Fridays uh, worth of effort into the world, refining it, and we hope that we made something uh, really kind of interesting and, and flavorful. And and I myself have put a few different tweaks on some of the standards, standard races and stuff that I hope people will end up enjoying as we continue to move along and, and go through the world together. Uh, feel free to leave feedback on our Facebook, tweet us. You know, all our socials are in uh, are <laughs> visible usually. Uh, or link yeah, I believe they're all page. down in the uh, the link right on the thing, right? Yeah. And uh, uh, we'll be posting kind of maybe some setup pictures and stuff of us setting up on our Tumblr too. We're going to try to be more active on that of like us working on different things. So feel free to drop a follow there and see what we're doing. Yeah. We're going to try to be more active on the <laughs> social media. So yeah, uh, moving over to the new platform for our broadcasting uh, kind of ate up a lot of our like development time. And yeah. as you probably saw, we still had a little, some issues. We think we got most of them figured out, but. Uh, uh, so, but we're definitely going to put more effort into developing the other parts and it's constant improvement process. So uh, we really appreciate you all being a part of it. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Anybody else have any other shout outs or anything that they like to do? You know? Well, I know that, um, I, I know that, yeah, Brandon. Yeah. Uh, I know that we have some family members and people who are watching and helping support us, you know? Just share um, yeah, and tell your friends, tell everybody that you can to come check us out on Mixer and Setting up an account is extraordinarily easy if you have used the Microsoft platform anywhere. And, it's, and, if you and, have an Xbox, it's even easier because it's automatically going to ask you if that's your gamer tag. It's just going to set it up right away. And uh, everyone who's been watching will get some bonus uh, channel currency. Not the Sparks, but we have our very own coins. Uh, you probably haven't seen them, but they've been ticking away in the background. And you get extra yep. ones for a follow, mm-hmm. which we will be using for giveaways and... Uh, different special things we're going to be doing in the future so uh you you're accumulating extra special points that you probably don't even know about yeah like we said about merchandise um we're trying to outfit the crew with everybody we're trying to get them shirts and we plan on making them available in the future so if anybody's interested you know hashtag swag we can start making a list if you're interested in having one and uh we really just appreciate anybody who's given us any time i mean you know we're not extraordinary actors and there are plenty of other D streams out there uh, to watch, and I'm well aware of that because I watched them myself. And there's plenty of talent and channels to check out, but we really hope that we can provide you with a just a, a special, like you know, feeling. Like we're all we, we're all really passionate about playing the game, and we love playing it. 
Uh, oh. I'm not saying anybody else isn't, but like, you know, we just we're not afraid to say like we're a bunch of nerds, and it's just oh, it's who okay. we are. And you know, I'm not a fucking amazing voice but actor, and can't. we're all working together to do it. But you know, I'm trying. We're gonna do our very best to make sure that this is an entertaining product for you guys to watch and we come back a, every Friday. We have a request. They want to see the movie. It's they short. The There's like three people going. Bring the kitty back. Show the kitty. They want to see my kitty. The, the, cat, the, cat, the cat's hiding somewhere. She's doing stuff. She's like, no. She's like, no, I don't make. She's doing All right, fine. Stuff. Here's your cat. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. She doesn't look happy. Her eyes are wide. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Man's what are you best doing? friend is also here, but we're not picking her up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah she weighs too much for that. We have a German Shepherd named Sasha. Yeah, here with us. Yeah, if you see this camera's moving randomly, that's probably her. <laughs> Yeah, that's probably the dog's doing doing herself. We normally keep them away as we can, but hey, she's cute. It's hard to say no. Yeah, um, the cool. internet loves yeah, cats. Pretty. Yeah, in our amazing <laughs> studio. Yeah. yeah. Our, amazing, our amazing studio is pet friendly. Because yeah. we love animals, and mm -hmm. so should you. No. This <laughs> is my inspiration. Oh, yeah. yeah for a character. For a character. Yeah, if you ever want to know what a character looks like, that, 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 that right, right there. Just taller, no. more just handy. Human size. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> with that, with with that being said, nobody has anything else to add? Yeah. I think we're good.